That's a really good one. Thank you. Attention all gamers, get your c*** out. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, welcome back to another episode of Trash Taste. I'm Colin and I'm here with the boys as usual, Joey and Gant. Hi. Hello. And yes, I've been wearing this jacket like 10 episodes in a row because it's cold. It's yeah. the winter. It's cold. I, I, I notice when you find a piece of clothing you like, you'll just wear it for That's like true. an entire year until I, you get bored of it. I saw, I saw a comment on last week's episode. It was like near the top and it just said like, oh, thank God Connor's wearing something other than merch. <laughs> well, I was wearing it underneath. It's like finally. Yeah. I was wearing it underneath, right? So right. it's- uh, Yeah. It's, it. It, Connor has like a, a winter outfit, yeah. a spring outfit, a summer outfit. I like uh, I like winter a lot because you can you can accessorize, right? You can add same. you can add jumpers, you can add coats. Yeah, yeah. Because the t-shirt game for me is lacking, right? And I, I just have t-shirts. So. Oh, yeah. I think the t-shirt game just in general is hard to, you know, be stylish with, right? Yeah. Because it's like normally to look stylish, you gotta like layer up, but you don't wanna do that, especially in Japan, because it's like 45 million degrees humidity. Yeah, yeah. I, I do not like, I've never been able to figure out my summer fit, like ever. And There's I'm, no I'm, such thing. I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out. Cause I've, I've tried wearing shorts and I'm just like, I, I see, you know, some of the models and you know, some of the drip that you can wear in summer. I'm mm. like, yeah, that, that doesn't look bad. I try it and I'm like, I just look like a clown. I don't know why it just, no. I don't know. I think I think you can make it work. It's it's a matter of confidence. That's, that's, that's what I say. <laughs> It's, I think I think anyone can make like summer drip work, but I think a lot of people are just very insecure about it because they're like, oh, it doesn't look good on me because you see all these models wearing it, right? And you're yeah. like, well, I'm clearly not a model. I'm clearly nothing close to that person. So yeah. if I wear what they wear, then it's not gonna work out for me. But like, you can make it work. Mm, okay, I think. Let, me, let me rephrase. I have in summer, I have one, singular good outfit that I think <laughs> looks good. And okay. I'm like, how many times like, can I get away with wearing this out before I have to like change into something else? So, and, so, so what's your outfit? Um, Like just- I, Like a t-shirt? Yeah, like a t-shirt and shorts combination with shoes that I like. And okay. then I try to like accessorize and change that. And you don't get a lot of choice in summer <laughs> to like swap things around. Right. Cause like, I don't think I look good with bright colors on me <laughs> a lot of the times. Uh, maybe it's all, uh, it's a mindset. It is a mindset. You gotta, you gotta fix that mindset. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I will like go for as long as I can to not wear shorts. Like it could be fucking- <laughs> uh, Me too, a little bit too. Yeah. Like in Thailand, it could be like 32 degrees or something. And I'm like, I can get away with wearing jeans. I think you're I, a madman. I can do it. You're an actual <laughs> madman. The moment it's like anywhere above 25 C, I'm like, all right, busting out the shorts. That's fair enough. Like I just, I don't know. I hate having my feet like constricted. Like even now I'm wearing like very <laughs> loose pants. Even I, in the winter. I feel like that's the Aussie in you though, you know? Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Cause in Australia we wear shorts like 10 out of the 12 months. <laughs> yeah. so. Aussies are like, can I get away with wearing sandals and shorts? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking do it. Sandals? <laughs> I like, I like, what are shoes? I like when the clothes hug me. They hug me like, like a good pair of jeans that constrict your blood vessels. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> no, nah, I don't like that. Yeah, nah, whatever, whatever. yeah cause, cause I noticed out, out of the three of us, yeah. um, even if it's like a boiling hot summer day, sun's beating down on us, Connor will still wear long sleeves no matter what. Yeah, so um, I'm not in the sun for long, generally. <laughs> yeah. um, and I find that having like long sleeves on means one, I don't have to apply sunscreen all over my arms when I go outside. Right. Yeah. Uh, but also I'm like less hot for the first like 20 minutes I'm outside. Because, right. oh, because the sun's, not, the sun's not touching my skin, right, right? right? So after that, I yeah, obviously it's like, I get really hot. So yeah. I, I'm never really outside for more than like 20, 30 minutes. So I just prefer to wear long sleeves so the sun doesn't like, I guess, burn my arms. Yeah. And that I can just kind of like, I'm, I'm initially less hot. I don't know if this mm. is any actually like, I don't know if this is all in my head. Well, no, I think it makes sense, right? Because like, isn't it like, you know, people who the like scum, go out- the scum. <laughs> the sun feels really intense on a yeah. summer day. But like, you know, when you like go out into the desert, they say it's better to actually like cover up as yeah, much yeah, of the yeah. skin as possible because like the sun hitting your skin actually does yeah. more damage than the sweat you produce or whatever yeah. it is. I don't know how accurate that is, but- Yeah, because I, d okay. So I don't know if this is like a contradictory thing. Mm. Um, Cause I've noticed, um, that's, you know, I'm, I'm a summer kid. I love the summer vibes mm -hmm. and I love like going to the beach and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but contradicti contradictory to that is I hate being in the sun. 
So, <laughs> I, think, I, think, I, think so, I don't I know. If, also, controversial opinion: hate being in the sun. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, I know you love your winter and everything like that. Oh, you know, I, I actually really like the summer, but mm. the feeling I like the most, right? So every time we go to the beach and we uh, have a holiday with the mates or something, where it's a beach holiday, mm. I'm that one guy who will do whatever I can to just find shade and stay in the shade. Yeah, me too. I really like the feeling of having a really hot day and just chilling out in the shade. But like, I'm like the one guy on the beach under an umbrella. Everyone else is sunbathing. I'm like, you guys are fucking madmen. I don't but want maybe I'm like, maybe I'm the madman for going to the beach and not liking, not wanting to be in the sun, but just liking the feeling of like being in but the shade. I feel that doesn't really apply to countries that have like really bad humidity, like Japan, for instance, because mm. a lot of days you could be in the shade during the summer here in Japan and it feels no different to being in the sun. That's true. Like the, Jap- the humidity I, I, definitely like is a factor. Yeah, the yeah, humidity okay. is like the killer. Like it makes sense, like say like back home in Australia where it's like a very, very dry summer, right? Where like the moment you walk out into the sun, you could probably fry a fucking egg on your forehead. But the moment you go into the shade, it's like, oh, it feels like I'm mm. in front of an AC. Like yeah. it makes sense for countries like that. But in Japan, I've like, I walk outside and I'm like, okay, I'm sweating my tits off. You go into the shade, <laughs> still sweating my tits off. So I just feel it doesn't work. Um, I mean, it, it. I mean, it can work. Uh, not in the city. Uh, mm. I feel like I. I always like the nice sea breeze, or just anywhere with like a nice breeze and just mm. chilling out in the shade. Honestly, one of my favorite core childhood memories is just sitting on a like lying down on a hammock. I think mm. hammocks are the, one Hell of the yeah. most underrated things of all time. I like, agree. Does anyone not rate them highly? I feel like everyone rates them highly. Who doesn't like everyone a rates them highly, but very few people actually own one. It's you a know? commitment. It, you know, <laughs> that's gotta, the thing. And I'm saying it is worth the commitment. <laughs> if you if you don't have someone to tie it up to, you gotta you gotta figure out to get this big ass metal thing and it's <laughs> massive and it's, right. you know, it's not easy to move around. And you're like, ah. Oh, I, oh. I think the one thing I like about the summer is like the evenings when, you know, the sun's gone down and it's like mm. still warm, but it's not like excruciating because of yeah. the sun. True. So yeah. like being outside and like going for walks like at night and stuff like that and like feeling the kind of warm-ish air, but it's like, it's still, it's <laughs> yeah, still uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah, warm-ish air. Like it's still hot, but it's not like the uncomfortable heat that you get during the day, right? Yeah, like, no. That's what I like about the summer. I, I, during I, the day, it can fuck off. Yeah, I totally agree. Like in the summer at about like midday, 12 o'clock, I just, I just stay inside. Death. But <laughs> like to contrast that my favorite my favorite like kind of feeling and vibes out of like any time in the year Mm. is a summer evening around 5 p.m. The sun's not gone down, but the sun is almost like setting. Mm. And it's just, it's that, that's like kind of the vibe that I look forward to every summer, Sure, you know, and you just go out and it's not too hot, but you can still like chill out. Uh, You can drink outside at a nice bar or something Mm, and just watch the sun go down. Good vibes, man. Good vibes. Good fucking vibes. But uh, what have you guys been up to? Well, uh, it's been two days uh, since we last recorded, mm-hmm. and uh, so meta. Yeah, yeah. So in those within those last two days, uh, Sydney's family have come to Aww. visit, and is it their first time in Japan? It is their first. They're very, time. they're very American, right? In yeah. Japan, and Damn. it has been an eye-opening experience, <laughs> to say the least. Okay, because I didn't know if I'd had enough to talk about okay. within just because I've they've only really been here for one day, uh, right? So I had I spent yesterday taking care of them. Yeah, um, and it was certainly eye-opening. Opening to see their perspective on, okay. on, on, on where, is, where, are the, where are the cheese curds? <laughs> yeah, so to, to give a bit of perspective, you know, Sydney's family is uh, very like, when you think of a Midwestern American family, mm-hmm. they are the most typical Midwestern American family you right. can think of. Mm-hmm. I think the only time, uh, the only time they've been outside of, let's say, they've they've been to Asia, was to visit Thailand, uh, mm. and that was because they wanted to visit my family and stuff like that. Sure, sure. And I th- I don't think they'd ever been even like closely close to like acclimated or even introduced to Asian culture or just mm. like the Asian mindset before Thailand. Um, so ha- seeing them here in Japan, which is probably like. Asia hard mode, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's, it's- Well, it's unlike a lot of other Asian countries in a lot of ways, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even for Asian countries, um, you know, Thailand is a bit more, I would say, f- friendly or like used to having like foreigners come in and tourists comes in mm-hmm. as, as well. Um, it is, Japan is even more on the side of, okay, we operate our own way and uh, people are just gonna have to get used to that. And right. you know, that's totally fine. Um, but you can have a much bigger culture shock than you can in other Asian countries. I'd say so, okay. yeah. And right. uh, so, yeah, so 
it's it's uh, it was eye opening for me because I think in our generation we have been like introduced to a lot of different like a lot of different cultures in the world. You know, just by being on the internet, you know, yeah, we, for sure. yeah, and just by just by being on the internet, we see how different cultures operate and stuff like that. Obviously for people in the older generation that have never really gone out of like European or American culture, it's something- Yeah, yeah, your parents, right? Um, it's it was, it was certainly weird seeing them, uh, see, seeing how they like- <laughs> So the first thing that really blew their minds and I had to like explain this to them like over and over again. <laughs> You do not tip here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, really? It's only multiple of the like explanations. I, it's, just, it's probably just so ingrained into their system, right? Where yeah. they just like they just accidentally leave some cash on the table. Yeah, right? because uh, every time you, every time they'd uh, encounter someone in the service industry here, they'd ask, "Why are they doing this not for tips?" <laughs> Why is he doing his job not for tips? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, because the, the, the first encounter they had was uh, going to the hotel and having a guy um, bring their bags up. Yeah. And the, and um, I had told them before, uh, Sydney had told them before that you don't need to tip anyone here. And uh, they had assumed, okay, that means they don't have to tip the waiters here. But you know, they, they, <laughs> <laughs> that could mean you have to tip, you know, your handlers here, they're, you know, taxi drivers. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a whole different deal, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's just, the, their first culture shock was just coming to like a service industry hotel and just realizing that people will just do things for them because in service of them to make them comfortable uh, without any incentive to like have to tip or mm. anything like that. God forbid. Um, and I was, I was explaining to them, uh, especially in bars and stuff, because I think bars was this was uh, bars was something. We'll, we'll get to like bars in a second, but bars was something that uh, in America, you know, I think people like people in bars try to cultivate uh, a nice welcoming kind of atmosphere so that they can get like good tips and stuff. Yeah, like of course, right? Mm -hmm. Tipping, I think, in like even above like restaurants, tipping in bars, I think is a massive thing because I think that's where the biggest variance is. Mm. Um, and they were very surprised at just how many small independent bars there are in such like a mm. densely compacted area. Right. And I'm like, and they were like, how do they stay in business if not for tips? I like, they, they it, it like didn't make sense for them. That's the question of the century. I mean, I, I, I've lived here for like ages and I'm like, I'm still impressed. Yeah, we still can, don't know. <laughs> I'm still impressed. And I was yeah. saying, instead of working, instead of working for tips, uh, in a lot of places, in this, a lot of these independent places in Japan, um, I think it's more of like, they try to cultivate a, like a, uh, what's, what's like, like a, a loyalty system. Like a loyalty right? system, right? Mm. Like a patron system where yeah. you have certain regular customers that come back as often well, as possible. Yeah, I mean, you can buy a lot of bars and like smaller independent ones. Uh, you can buy a bottle. Mm -hmm. like, mm. And they put your name on it. So whenever yeah. you come back in, you can drink from that bottle. Yeah. yeah. So they'll pour you, you know, and you'll see it because they'll have like rows and rows of bottles numbered or have name tags on them. Mm. <laughs> yeah. um, so that, that, that's like another way that they try to make sure that, you know, you, you come back a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so the first the first restaurant I took them to yesterday was, uh, was a sushi restaurant. Okay. Because uh, okay. I was thinking sushi is like, Entry level in my mind. Well, that's like the Japanese food. It's it's like, yeah. the thing about. Yeah, it, right? it's it's the Japanese food, and it's readily available in America. Um, but you know, even if it's readily available in America, take a Midwest, you know, <laughs> introduce a Midwestern family to sushi. They don't eat sushi very very often. Mm. Um, and uh, the cream cheese. Where's yeah, the yeah. avocado. <laughs> I <laughs> asked for the California roll. Where is it? <laughs> it made it made me realize that I take it for granted just how like acclimated a lot of our friends are, mm. uh, because the first challenge that uh, we came across was a uh, chopsticks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> chopsticks, yeah. and I'd forgotten that chopsticks were just a thing that's- It's a skill that's acquired. <laughs> it's a skill that's acquired. And okay, it, it, it did make me think a bit. Okay, it did it, it, it did make me think a bit after after seeing them have to like try to navigate their way around chopsticks, which in the end I was like, just use your hands. Cause you know, yeah. you, you can you can use your hands with sushi here. Okay. <laughs> just fucking grab that shit. <laughs> they're a Matsuya. They're like, all right, I guess I'll eat the rice and the beef with my hands. All right. Yeah. <laughs> cause, uh, Cause one of Sydney's aunts did ask for a fork, I think. And I was just like, just use your hands. Okay, just, just, uh, just use no. your hands. No, <laughs> do not bring shame to this table. <laughs> we are already standing <laughs> I, but, I told my parents, I was like, yeah. hey, uh, please practice chopsticks a little bit. Yeah, you come. Just, just, uh, just use them a little bit. Yeah, uh, because, okay, it, it did make me think, okay. 
because I've grown up with chopsticks, okay? Asian yeah. household. I've grown up with chopsticks. It's a part of Asian culture in a mm. lot of Asian countries. Yeah. Is it the best tool in the modern day? Is, uh, is it superior to forks and spoons and knives? The more I use it, the more I think there are circumstances where it's good. And there are other times where I'm like, dude, just the knife and fork is just the go. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's the, you know, the spoon's never gonna be replaced. The spoon is no. literally, <laughs> the, yeah. there's no no competitor. Yeah. Uh, that's why the except, spork- Except the hand. Yeah. The spork <laughs> is the superior option. See, the spork. Okay, here's the thing. The spork on paper is the superior, <laughs> op is the superior option to everything, but can you use it without feeling like a five-year-old? No. <laughs> no, it does because I mean, it's always plastic as well. You, know? so you yeah. always kind of feel like yeah, we're we're the, the metal forks. Yeah, they're yeah. Like metal forks. Uh, the me metal forks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because 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 uh, I was thinking, you know, yeah, I'm I'm Asian and I I will always like promote you know people trying to use chopsticks and trying to like learn different cultures and everything like that. Sure, but I'm like. You know what? I never needed a tutorial to you know, like use a fork. You know, I, I, there was there was never a, <laughs> there was never a, like a learning arc in my life to learn how to use a fork. Yeah. But do you remember like the first time you learned how to use a chopstick? No, I was just I was kind of born do. with one in my hand. Honestly, <laughs> like I, like when I, by the time I like you know gained consciousness, I was just like, yeah, <gasps> it's in my hand and I can use it. I, I don't think I used chopsticks until I was like fifteen. Or 16. Yeah, mm. right. And I remember having a hard time. Like I remember it was tough. And like, I remember I'd get, I, I'd get like hand pains and wrist pains. Yeah, because yeah, it would cramp, it, right? I was holding it so hard mm. and yeah. so like tense. Yeah, and it would cramp. And I, I just remember it, it is tough. Like it does take a little while. Like, I used yeah. to- It's not like plug and play like a knife and fork. No, it's not. You know? I, I yeah. used to use like the, the, in Japan, they sell like the, the yeah. hashi for children. Yeah. Where like the ends are connected and it's like kind of on an axis. You should, you so should bring that. Yeah, you should use Actually, that. Actually, I think, uh, was it? We used that for Aki's was mom. Oh, I, saw some, I saw some YouTuber that would, went, they went around Japan and they would always bring it with them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So they were ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it helps, honestly. Um, yeah, because like, I, I remember, cause like, I remember learning how to use chopsticks. And I think to this day, there is like a proper like chopstick technique, right? Yes, you kind of you kind of like hold it like a pen and you use one of your fingers to like yeah, you, adjust it, you know? Yeah. I don't use that technique. I oh. kind of like brute force my way to just like, figure out a way to like open and close the chopsticks. Like it's it's kind of like an extent, oh, can, can we actually, can we, have, we have some chopsticks. Let's 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 rate our chopstick techniques. Yeah. And because because it, it did make me realize, huh? You know what? I, well, why do we have to go through a learning arc just to use <laughs> one, a basic tool to eat? Were you Asia? taught or were you just, you figured it out? I figured it out myself. Yeah, me too. I, and I think yeah. I somehow figured out the way I'm that like, everyone else does it. Right. I'm like, you know, you know, I'm like, you know, maybe the Europeans were kind of onto something because <laughs> they, they just, they just figured out a plug and play kind of system. Like, I, I guess it, with sushi, a knife and fork is not as good as a chopstick. No, no, no. But even yeah. the chopstick is tough because you're, you're supposed to in sushi, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. You so Joey, you have oh. you have the proper technique, Go. right? Show, uh, show us the yeah. proper technique to use oh, the chopstick. Oh. So the proper oh, technique, I okay, so I kind of have to show it like this. Yeah, that's yeah. how I do it. Right. Yeah. Um, but for me, yeah. this bottom hashi stays like, like still. stay still. That's and the you only just technique. move the top one. Yeah. But I have seen people like my granddad, for example, my Chinese, yeah. uh, not Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> my, <laughs> my Japanese granddad and my sister, they do like a cross technique. They do this. Oh, I've seen Wait, that. And I'm like, mean, how like, the and then, they, and then, and then, and then, and then they, they pull it up and they do this. And I don't know how to do that, but my granddad it's did like it. Scissor, my right? mom does it. My sister does it. And I, I do it this way. I th which is, I yeah. think it's the correct way to do it. How do I do it? This is hard chopsticks. Oh, this okay. is hard chopsticks. Okay. Yeah, so when I eat, I do like that. Yeah, so that's correct. I don't know. Okay, that's just yeah. like the way. I think that that's correct. Okay, so that's that's the correct way. And that's like, I, I only use that if I, I only use this way because if I need like precision, because with this one, you can really get precise. Yeah. Because uh, some but, restaurants, right? Like yeah. it's rude to leave any rice left behind. Yeah. Right? yeah. Unagi, right? If you get an unagi and you leave the rice, it's like, well, yeah. well it wasn't good enough for yeah. you. Yeah. So you, have to, you have to eat literally every single grain of rice and you yeah. fucking need that. Yeah, you need yeah. that. Cause to you gotta go off. around the box, like picking every grain up. Yeah, so this is the correct technique to use as chopsticks. <laughs> I think, is it not? Are you holding it weird? You like How are you holding it? No, because I, I, I was going to say, I was going to say, I have my own method of using chopsticks. <laughs> 
<laughs> that right, I guess I guess I just developed as a kid. Yo, because what the fuck Jesus is that? Christ. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so, no, that, that's that's like that's your that. This this is just my own technique, which is which is I, I don't know. There's, okay, there's show no, me how you pick up something. Okay, so you pick up something. You just like bring it in and you use one of your fingers to like part the chopsticks like that. Okay. And this is the worst way. I've it, ever is, seen. it is the worst way, but it was like the only way that I could like try try to pick up a chip. Yeah, okay. This bag. Cause like it was it was the only way like I could like do fuck? it. <laughs> it's just that's <laughs> impressive that it works. But my God, does that look inefficient? It's, that it looks like it hurts. It probably, it, no, actually, this uh, this the reason I use this technique is because like my parents were just like, that's not the proper chopstick technique. Use the proper chopstick technique, like 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 this, the precision technique. Okay. And I, that, this would just give me hand cramps. I was like, mom, this just ain't doing it for me. Okay. So I'm just like, I just tr I just tried to like find a way. I, I just tried to find a way to like make my hands not cramp. And this way was just, it, it's like it's more comfortable on my hands, and yeah. I could. I can pick up like I can pick up stuff. I can do normal things, but it's not very good with precision, and it's awful with Korean style chopsticks as well. Oh, I hate Korean. I yeah. hate metal chopsticks. Yeah, metal chopsticks. I hate it. Yeah, okay. when, it, when you bite, because like you know, sometimes you have some foods and you're trying to put it in your mouth yeah. from the chopsticks, and you sometimes you actually touch the chopsticks, right? Which yeah, yeah. Like, obviously, like a barbarian, but okay. it's metal. You're like, oh. Question: How do you hold a pencil then? I don't hold a pencil because the way I hold the chopstick is the way I hold a pencil. Mm -hmm. I do it. Uh. Yeah, like that. Yeah, like this, right? Okay, Top I hold it. I, I hold it like this. Oh I my guess. God, God. <laughs> I guess this. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck are you doing that? I don't know. This one. This has always just felt uncomfortable for me. I. I, I guess I, I. I. You know, I just realized. I guess I hold a pencil the same way I hold a chopstick. Yeah, <laughs> but that's that's all it is, right? You just you get the you just pretend the pencil is the top chopstick, and then you just slip the bottom one underneath, and you hold onto it. You, don't, you guys don't want to know how Gunn holds his dick when he pisses. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Kai, Kai has a picture of like yeah. a chopstick holding. Yeah, the chopstick holding. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly how I do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like that. Yeah, so I have my own like homebrew method of like holding a chopstick and using a chopstick and it works. It works my entire life. Dude, if the, it works, the, it works. There's just yeah. like some foods, even in Japan where I'm like, man, this is just so much harder with the chop, like chopsticks, right? What? Like, let's say you wanna, um, so even even like sushi sometimes, right? So sushi is supposed to dip the meat in the soy sauce. Yes. Not, yeah. So that means you have to grab it and then kind of turn it. Yeah. yeah. Which is kind of a hard tech. Even I struggle to do that because sometimes yeah. the sushi will fall, or the um, the rice will separate from the fish when you yes. turn it upside down. Yeah. I'm like, dude, okay, one hands superior for the sushi. For I sure. mean, with yeah. sushi, yeah. I just I just use my hands. Yeah, that, that's fine. Yeah. But yeah. like um, sometimes if you're having uh, something that you need to dip into like three things. Mm, like yeah. Let's say you're having like a beef bowl or like a shogayaki or something yeah, yeah, where yeah. you're getting rice and then you're grabbing a piece of meat and then you want to dip it in mayo or some sauce. You're mm. like, okay, I am like getting four layers of things now and I'm hoping it stays together. <laughs> yeah. Whereas a fork, you can just scoop, stab and then just dip. Yeah. yeah. You know what like, I mean? Like I, I can use chopsticks to eat rice, but I'm like, is is chopsticks superior to a spoon? Like superior to a spoon? In in terms of like eating rice, in terms of yeah. just like ease of ease of use and uh, functionality, you know. Because the thing is, chopsticks look cool. I'm I'm, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. Chopsticks just look cool, and they feel cool. It I can say me, this because I'm, I'm I'm Asian. I grew up with me both feel cultures. Like Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I'm bringing this up because I, I because I, I like if Connor brought this up, there would be like <laughs> oh. eyeball, like eyebrows like raising. But I'm like, you I know, know there is a kind of elegance to it. I will. Yeah. Yeah. Like it does feel a bit more elegant. I don't mm -hmm. know why. Maybe because yeah. it's it's like very precise. Mm. Yeah. Um. But there are some foods they've given me chopsticks in Japan where I'm like, no. This is not allowed. <laughs> uh, I went to an Italian restaurant one time and they served me pasta with chopsticks. Oh, that yeah. happens. And I was like, the fuck is this? I also refuse Mama to- Mamma mia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Italians <laughs> are crying. Yeah. I also refuse to eat salad with chopsticks as well. Yeah, maybe yeah. loves eating salad. With like some, it's like something about just stabbing in the fork. Stabbing with like a it's, fork. it's it it hits different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to just stab all the leaves and get them yeah. all. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. like pick up each individual like leaf with chopsticks. Yeah, it's not the same. okay, we're sidetracked. Anyway, yeah. sorry. Yeah, I just I, I, I just I just realized that uh, you know, sp uh, trash tea. Try not to have a tangent challenge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fail. So I just realized that spoons and fork don't really have a skill ceiling and chopsticks do. And I'm like, a skill ceiling? 
<laughs> it just, that's just- You mean like an entry, a barrier of entry? A barrier of entry yeah. and a skill ceiling as well. Because- <laughs> <laughs> Want to see my trick shots with a spoon? <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Raycon. All right, boys, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Have any of you actually stuck to your New Year's resolutions? <laughs> no. no. Here's a piece of advice, guys. Even the smallest thing can make a big change in your life if you commit to it daily and use it every day, like my Raycons. <gasps> Raycon is premium audio at the perfect price point, so you can build great habits without breaking the bank. Whether you're looking for a pair of everyday earbuds, low latency gaming headphones, or a speaker with a battery that will last all night at your next party, Raycon's got you covered. And yep, Raycon starts at half the price of other premium audio brands. Raycon has three customizable sound profiles, wow. earbud tap functions, Woo. noise isolation, Woo. awareness mode, Woo. the list goes on. Woo. I personally love using Raycons on the go, which is why its awareness mode is so useful for me. It lets me hear surrounding sounds when I'm out and about and I need to be aware. And it's water and sweat resistant as well. So it's perfect whenever I'm working out. So ready to buy something small with a big impact? Go to buyraycon.com slash trash taste today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash trash taste to score 15% off by raycon.com slash trash taste. This episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Boys, how do you feel when you find a deal? Pretty exciting. Pretty good, Connor. Yeah. Oh, well, but what about when you're surprised by a deal? Oh, that's just even more exciting. Well, I wish that would happen to me. Well, wish no longer, Gal, because thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Really? Yeah, but, uh, yes, but I how does it work? I'll tell you, Gant. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. Imagine it right now. Everyone okay, watching this, okay, imagine okay. it right oh, now. Joe, Joe, Joe. When you check out, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Oh. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find it for that done. site. And if Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices d -d 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 drop. Oh my God. Gentlemen, I've been trying to get a little bit more fit recently, okay. which is why I recently bought a Fitbit and oh. Honey saved me $15 oh. on that Fitbit. Honey doesn't just work on desktops, it works on your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. And if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. Straight Right and up. by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting Yourself. this show. Yes. Get PayPal will. Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash trash taste. That's joinhoney.com slash trash taste. Back to the episode. Um, But yeah, just having to teach them how to eat a sushi as well. Cause uh, the the first thing- <laughs> With your mouth. <laughs> the first thing, okay, is, is, is this like, I thought it would be obvious, right? You have like one piece of sushi. Mm. A piece of sushi is like a bite. Uh -huh. Yes. And I saw like the first thing uh, some of her family members did uh, was like bite half of it. I, they're probably just precarious. They're probably just right. a bit scared of it. Yeah, they're yeah, probably yeah. like, oh, it's a piece of raw meat. Uh, maybe it's a type of fish I've never had. So let me just take a test bite. I don't want to eat the whole thing in case it fucking sucks. Yeah. You know, so I get no. it. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, maybe they have small mouths. I don't know. <laughs> no, because it, it, it was it, it was uh, it was it was interesting just to see how the, their approach to like even like the smallest things mm -hmm. um, and just seeing all of the different types of fish as well. Because mm. you, oh, yeah. you go to sushi and they were used they they had sushi before, but it was basically only tuna and salmon. Yeah. Well, thank God they have those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Salmon is like the gateway. It's like, just yeah. try, try the salmon first. And then you're yeah. like, whoa, this is really different. Yeah. <laughs> so if, you, if, you, if you're stuck on the tuna and salmon, you, you, you just might as well not go into that rabbit hole, you know? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And then just uh, seeing them have a, uh, the salmon row for the first time. And, you uh, made them eat salmon row the first time. Yeah. I mean, I, I got I got the sushi platter. Oh, so okay, okay. with all I, sorts of them. Didn't, I bet they didn't like that. Mixed, mixed, okay, okay, mixed okay. opinions, mixed okay. opinions. Okay, fair, but fair. it's weird because like you see salmon row and like some some Westerners are like no fish eggs no, but then I, I, you see caviar is like this you know, sought after kind of like very expensive fish eggs as well. And I'm like, I do think, is, it, is it a mental thing? I think, or? I think it's the size of them. And I, I don't know, for me, the first time I remember, it was how red they were. Mm. It's kind of weird. Like mm -hmm. for some reason, the because caviar is black, I never thought about it much. I never put much. I think it's also it. because like salmon is also like it's slightly yeah. tran like translucent as well, that so you too. can see yeah. the inside like red part too. So it really looks like some frog eggs or you know yeah. like some like some eggs like actual I think eggs. It's it's unusual like, to have spherical stuff like that in small. <laughs> like, think what? about think about Western food. Can, can, okay. What is the the closest comparison to salmon roe that like we that we often eat? Like there is not. Like, like we don't have- Other like than it, regular eggs? Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. But like, like my, my point is if you 
if you gave someone caviar mm. in uh, the UK, but you spread it on a piece of toast, they'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah. They'd be like, what the fuck That's is this? True. Like, cause they're mm. like, this is a, like, I don't associate this, sh this shape in this a quantity is food. I know it sounds weird, but I think that's genuinely like a part of it. Mm. Yeah, it could, it could be. I'm, I'm, think, I'm thinking about it and like spher spherical things, I, the closest thing I could think of was like tapioca and that didn't get like- Like that's not really that popular as well though. Yeah, like, that, that mm. didn't get popular until like the past few years like, like I, bubble tea and I, stuff like that. I do think uh, uh, when you're being trying to get people to try new foods and being open with it, yeah. having the food resemble other foods that they eat is a lot yeah. easier to get them to do. Yeah. It's like the yeah. fish, right? I think the biggest obstacle is that this looks like nothing that I eat. Ever, yeah, yeah. Right. If you gave me a meat substitute, like <clears throat> any kind of wild animal, people don't bat an eye because they're like, it kind of looks like it just looks like a beef or it yeah. looks like chicken, right? Like, sure. yeah. So you're like, oh, I know what this is going to taste like. Then you try it and you're like, oh, it's a bit, it's a bit weird. It's a bit different. And I yeah. think I think it's the fact that it looks different. You can clearly see the texture is different. Mm. You're kind of expecting the worst. Right? Yeah. Right. I, I mean, I, okay. I have a confession. The first time I came to Japan. I had the sushi and I think I just wanted to like it so badly that I pretended I liked it more than I actually did <laughs> because I really wanted to. Okay. Like I really, but I, I think at that point, I, I'd, I'd been super British my entire life and I'd never had anything even, like I'd barely ever eat like just salmon. Yeah, like raw. It was always grilled yeah. or yeah. steamed, right? Like I never had even raw salmon. So even, even the raw salmon was like a step for me where I was like, whoa. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't only until after I lived here and actually forced myself to kind of, you know, eat it a little bit every now and then, and then eventually you get like a weird craving for it. Mm, and then yeah. you start, then you kind of realize, oh, I think I like this a lot now. Mm. Yeah, um, Sydney often tells me, and I, I don't know if this is true at all, but Sydney often tells me that your taste buds change every like, every few years or something like that. I think so. I've seen uh, that. And, and I, like, I don't know if it's like that exact time, but I yeah. definitely evolved. Yeah, for yeah. sure. 100%. And I'm like, my, like, I'm like, I'm like, what are your sources, Sydney? And, and she's never given me the sources. <laughs> my time. But like, <laughs> I, I can say from personal experience, especially with sushi, um, I grew up, I grew up thinking sushi was like disgusting. Right. Like there was, <laughs> there was there like, was something about every time someone was eating sushi, something about the fishy smell of sushi and like mm. the smell of the smell of like the soy sauce specifically because mm. uh oh, you know true it. true sushi soy sauce has like that little bit like that fishy kind of like sea smell. Yeah, it uses you know? like fish oil. Yeah, like yeah. like fish I love oil. The smell and that. that smell always put me off. And mm. I was I remember growing up, I was like, I hate sushi. Don't like it. It's gonna make me throw up. Mm. And then I remember like when I was about 23 or something, I remember the exact moment because I was on a date with Sydney. Um, and this was like the first few months that we were dating and she'd ordered sushi. And I'd never, I'd never, even thought sushi came close to appetizing. In fact, right. it was like sickening for me. Mm. She ordered sushi. It was like basic ass, like cheap salmon sushi somewhere in London. Not even like gourmet sushi. It was just like cheap salmon sushi. And I remember just, in just London, the, man. yeah. Yo sushi? It, <laughs> <laughs> probably yo sushi. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was a Japanese restaurant. Right. Um, and I remember the sushi plate coming out and something in my mind just like clicked. And something in my mind just went, that don't look so bad actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that, that happens a lot. I yeah. find myself wanting to try foods that I think I remember I didn't like. Yes. Yeah. Again, even if I if I dislike them again, but I want to try. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and I remember I remember I remember telling Sydney like before before we started dating, I was like, yeah, I hate sushi. Just like don't. If we're gonna go on a date somewhere, go somewhere where I can order something other than sushi. If you're gonna order sushi, mm. I remember she ordered that plate. I looked at it for a second, and I was like, can I can I have a bite? Can I, can I try that? Yeah. And she was like really surprised and I tried it and my brain was just like, oh, you like this now. This yeah, is this yeah. is this is actually slapping. <laughs> uh, you need to get more of this. And I went from like hating sushi to now sushi is like one of my favorite Japanese dishes. Like mm. I sushi is the one dish where I have not I have not got bored of mm. after moving to Japan. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. I, I, I love fish now a lot. Yeah. Mm. Uh, right? even, like even when I go to like America or the UK, if it, if there's like grilled fish on the menu, I'm like, dude, yes. I used I, to, I'll, I'll take that over a steak now. An another mm. fish I used to hate, mackerel as well. I fucking love mackerel. Mackerel's great. I love, Mackerel's I've fucking great. Mackerel. But I remember it had such a strong fishy taste when I was a yeah, kid. For sure. And my mom would cook it every now and again. I'd be like, oh, okay, this is this is the shit food day. Okay, thanks, mom. Thanks. <laughs> Did you have to cook mackerel? Okay. <laughs> I then had it in Japan. I'm like, I fucking love my, I, I love mackerel now, mom. Yeah. I, when I, uh, you know, when I was on the chicken and broccoli diet and I lost a lot of weight. Yeah. Because yeah. chicken and broccoli was my like, that was my dinner. But for mm. lunch a lot of the time, I used to just go to like Aldi and yeah. I would just buy those uh, canned mackerel. Oh yeah. yeah it was yeah, like yeah. in tomato. Yeah. yeah. Cause there was like a hundred calories and it's like a ton of protein and I would just eat canned mackerel like every day. 
right. you could heat it up in a pan as well. Mm, yeah. It was so good. I love mackerel. I've always loved it. And sardines yeah. too, even though they're a little bony. Sardines are okay. For I like sardines, but man, it's like they, it's like they've been designed to spite humans for farming them because the little crunchiness and sometimes so many bones. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Anyway, have, go, go ahead. Go have ahead. you ever, have you ever had your taste buds change? Because you, oh, yeah. you seem to be someone who likes everything, Joey. <laughs> True, like I didn't used to like concrete, and now I'm a big fan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just started chewing on my mattress one day, and I was like, oh, it's actually kind of good. No, it's um when I was like uh, up until maybe around like middle school, high school, I. Base, I I despise what <laughs> you know that scene in Old Boy where he eats the octopus. Yeah, I just had this vision of Joey watching it, being like, "Fuck, I wish that was me." <laughs> God <laughs> damn he, it! He, he eats the live octopus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joey's like, "Damn, I do okay. actually like that." Yeah. But. Wait, what live octopus? Yeah, I've had it before in Japan. What? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, have I never told you? <laughs> what the fuck? No. Uh, when I went to Okayama for a sponsored video, this was fucking like five, six years ago. What's uh, wrong with you, dog? We went to this restaurant where <laughs> the, the guy, the guy, like he I've brought out a live they octopus, a lot, they oh. and they he fucking decapitates and cuts the legs in like a matter of like. 15, 20 seconds to the Bro. point where you the tentacles, right away, right? They like yeah, the you. tentacles are still wriggling around Bro. and they give it to you and they like eat it. Okay. And and you have to chew it like a lot because if you don't chew it enough, then yeah. the suction cups can get stuck in your throat. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> this boy's eating this. <laughs> and I ate it. I'm like, this is the freshest fucking like octopus sashimi I've had in my life. Probably because it was alive 20 seconds no, ago. No, life, that's the best spice. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it when I swallow and the life just drains out of whatever I just ate. No, but um, like when I was in middle school, high school, like I basically couldn't eat most vegetables. Like le legit, like growing up, the only vegetables I actually enjoyed <laughs> eating was cucumber and lettuce. <laughs> you mean the closest thing to water? Yeah, basically. <laughs> any vegetable that Those had- are both like 95 or something yeah, percent water. Any vegetable that had any like vegetable flavor, <laughs> basically. I really wanted Sullivan to yeah, yeah. find water. Yeah, I couldn't eat it. Like I hated carrots, onions, like tomatoes, like I still peppers. Think, I yeah. still think carrots are like, C tier vegetables. I mean, they're not like the best, but you know, I, I can eat them now. Yeah, but like I, before yeah, yeah, I, I used them. to like, I couldn't even eat them. I was like, I fucking hate all of these. And then just one day for some reason I was out with some friends and uh, there was like a small little like salad, I think with like whatever I was eating. And it had like, you know, like carrots and you know, everything that was, ex you know, with lettuce and cucumber. And I was like- <laughs> That's how then, we get them boys. Yeah, and then, I, and then, yeah, it was kind of the same thing with you with the sushi. I just looked at, I'm like, that kind of looks good. <laughs> and I don't know why. And yeah. I t and I ate it and I was like, oh, I actually kind of like this now. Like salad tastes good? What the fuck? <laughs> vegetables, <laughs> vegetables <laughs> taste good? And now like, yeah, I can pretty much eat all vegetables now. Yeah. And it's so weird. And, and, and I don't remember what happened or like what conditioned me to like suddenly be like that. But just one day, yeah, like it just clicked in my head. I'm like, you can eat this now. It's like, okay. You're free. Yeah, you're free. You can eat this now. You have unlocked a, a new part of your brain. You've ascended a new level. You may now enjoy vegetables. <laughs> you unlock the skill tree of vegetables. I, yeah. You're good now. I'm interested to hear what sushi they didn't didn't like. What was the consensus? Yeah, yeah. What, what was like the, okay. what, like how okay. far did you go down the sushi? I, I, I didn't go that far okay, because okay. I, I kind of just- uh, So you I, didn't go down like the sp sperm sack, right? I, look, I, I, mean, I, I wouldn't I, do that. I <laughs> saw I saw the shirako and I, I and I was just like, they they are looking at cuttlefish, like it's an alien thing right now. So <laughs> I'm just like, uh, which was something they unfortunately did not like. Cuttlefish. 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 Which one's that one? What's that in Japanese? Cuttlefish is like the small uh, squid looking. Yeah, it's ones. like the white one. Yeah. It's the- th it's, it's like the whole squid is on top of it. Yeah. Oh. That's cuttlefish. I, didn't, yeah. I thought it was squid. It's a, it's a small, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, like, like, it's, yeah, like, yeah. A, it's like a type of squid. It's, it's oh, kind of okay, like, okay, it's kinda okay, like okay, type okay. of fish. Yeah, yeah, type okay, of squid, okay. yeah. Yeah, that one, even I'm not a big Hotaruika, fan of that one. I think it's called. Yeah. Even I'm not a big fan of that one. It's normally just really chewy. Yeah. Um, like, right, you gotta I, get I, a, I just get through this one. Yeah. I, it tastes like nothing. Yeah. Um. I happily introduced them to fatty tuna though, which- Well, that's like oh, a good one. Yeah. Were, oh, that's like Woo! chutoro no toro. Like if, if you want to introduce your family or someone foreign to something that you could, it's really hard to get outside of Japan unless yeah. you pay up the ass. And they, they like that, all of them? They, they fucking love that. Of okay, it's, yeah. it's, got, it's got fats, man, of course, yeah, man. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, because like chutoro no toro, it's kind of like, it's kind of like just normal tuna, but just like, 
A5 Wagyu. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's like the A5 Wagyu of tuna, uh, of tuna yeah. which is good. Um, but surprisingly, they actually enjoyed most most of it. I think oh, yeah. the salmon roe was the only thing that they really were just like, it was- Did they was, try uni? No. Okay, yeah, no. that's from, that's the one where I understand that it's love for a lot of people, but I don't like uni. That's, yeah. the, that's the Dark Souls boss of sushi, right? It's, <laughs> it's like- It's like the- It's the Marmite Yeah, the Marmite of sushi. Marmite sushi. Marmite sushi. Marmite. You either like it or you don't. Yeah. Like, yeah, I true. think there's just something in it that just doesn't draw, like What don't jam. you like about it? It's like a gas in my mouth. It's like, I've, <laughs> I've like, it's like a, a bomb is going off of Really? Like, it's so intense and strong. Because I, it's I, like salty? No, it's not even that. It's like there's this, there's this weird taste to it that mm. just isn't. I don't know. It's not nice. I, I, I've like, heard from like people. In my I've heard people who don't like uni say that they don't like it because it's like they just took a mouthful of seawater. Maybe that it it tastes like it tastes like soapy to me when I eat it. It's like very mm. chemically. Like I don't know how to uh. Uh, place it. I just I've I've I because you always get it in the set. Yeah, and I always eat it because I don't want to disrespect the dude. Yeah, and I just kind of like it's more of a you just dude, fight through it. Right, okay, right, right. Great. Right. I do the Matt Stoney technique. I'm like, eat <laughs> <laughs> oh, delicious. Great. Yeah, really yeah, good. yeah. Yeah, it's really weird because I remember when I first moved to Japan, uh, first time I tried uni, wasn't a fan either. It was mm, something was off about the taste. Mm. And then I just had this one great experience in Hokkaido. Where and of no, course. That's how it does. Yeah, yeah. That's, how it does. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's where the third eye of food gets open. <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then I had this one uni in Hokkaido, and then like I, like we just talked about, something <laughs> something in my brain just like clicks <laughs> and switch, and it just unlocked this new skill, like oh. uni skill tree in my brain. And then after that one experience, I fucking love uni. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is. It was just having that, that perfect balance between something it was like a little bit sweet, but just like the right kind of sweet, but also- It's like a creamy, salty type of fish, Creamy, right? salty, and sweet, yeah. all in like one little Whew. package. So did you did you take them to like a sushi chain or like some fancy place? Oh uh, no, honestly, cause- uh, it was like Sushi Row is pretty decent. Kappa Sushi. Like, yeah. I'd say Sushi Row is solid, bro. I, yeah, I, don't, I don't hate it. Yeah, I mean, we went to, uh, so first place Sydney wanted to take them was Asakusa, you know, kind oh, yeah, like, of like, you know, you know do, do the rounds in Asakusa. Yeah. Uh, and we just went to, uh, it was unsurprisingly very busy. So we went yeah. to a sushi restaurant that seemed to be a local place there. Mm. Uh, didn't have an English menu. So that's so that's start. that's why it was less full than some of the other nice. sushi places. For sure, yeah. Um, so it was kind of like a low, it wasn't a chain. It was just like a local, locally run sushi okay. place. Um, and yeah, uh, they very much enjoyed the sushi experience, which was good. Yeah. Got got the good first pass. Nice. Uh, took them around Asakusa, uh, which was taking people around Asakusa. I've never heard anyone pronounce it that way. Asakusa? Yeah. Asakusa. Asakusa. That's, that's my shitty pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> it's confusing because there's Asakusa and then there's Asakusa. Akasaka. Yeah, Akasaka, yeah. that's right. As well, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah showed them showed them the temple and everything like that. And I think they got a bit shocked where, uh, not not shocked, but it's, uh, they saw like the trust system in full effect where, you know, like when you get like the- uh, Oh, the omikuji. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there's no one, there's no one looking, but you have to like pay a hundred uh, hundred yen just to get your fortunes done and stuff yeah. like that. There's no one looking at all. You could just, you could just get your you fortune. You could just take one. You could you just want. take one and, uh, you know, no one's looking and, uh, and that's when I had to explain to them about Japan's trust system, where you are- <laughs> Americans are just <laughs> sweating. I think, I think there are some places in Europe and America that I, I have it, like in rural areas. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for have, sure. They have um, like farms have, you know, you can just- But Japan like, is one of the few places I feel where they also cities. do it in urban areas. Yeah, well. yeah, you yeah. Can get it in Like cities. more commonly yeah. than other places I feel. For sure, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so we uh, did that experience and then we got to the evening. And then we were like, I was I was trying my best to figure out a good way to introduce them to uh, Tokyo and Japanese nightlife and uh -huh. just drinking culture here and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I was thinking, you know, maybe in <clears throat> maybe in Izakaya would be like good and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. And Sydney was like, no. Oh god. We're not, we're, let's 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 not do that. Uh, Sydney's yeah. like, let's go to a girls' bar. Oh my god. <laughs> because, <laughs> because because it's. Because it's Sydney. Why does why she want to go to a girl's bar? Because it's Sydney. I don't know, Sydney. Sydney probably walked in and was like, don't worry, they know me. Sydney genuinely like enjoys going, going to girls' bars. Oh, 
<laughs> and so one of the first places- Because she just wants to talk, right? Yeah, yeah she, just she just wants, wants to talk Japanese. <laughs> one of the first places we go. So it's uh, me, Sydney, her parents, and her uncle and auntie, right? Mm. So- <laughs> She goes up to one of these girls uh, who is promoting promoting like a random girls bar or something yeah. like that. And she goes, oh, can uh, can we have a, pl- uh, can we have a, uh, do you have space for six? Mm. And uh, the girl goes, yeah. And then Sydney calls over her family and just <laughs> the realization in the girl's face where she realizes the customer base that she's bringing in is so far beyond, so far removed from the customer base she is used to. Like a group of American tourists, not even young American tourists, a just, family. Like, just like a family. <laughs> and- the girl's uh, probably like, you You do realize what you're about to go into, right? Yeah. Like, this isn't we, a diner. We, like, don't, we don't do that here. No, we <laughs> don't do that here. And so, um, and so we, we go in and it's it's a very small girl's bar. So we, there's not really like any tables there. Sure. There's one like L-shaped counter and that's kind of it. Mm. So I'm like, okay, Sydney, you take that side and I'll take the other side just so, you know, just so there's always someone who can kind of speak Japanese on either side in yeah, case yeah, the girls yeah. want to like, get friendly and uh, talk to talk to the family members and stuff like that. Mm. And so I sit next I sit next to uh, Sydney's mum and Sydney sits on the complete opposite side uh, of the bar. Uh, and so the girls come over and they start talking and explaining the system of this bar, uh, which was, uh, which my parents, uh, sorry, well, which Sydney's parents and family were just like, uh, is, what's, what kind of service do they offer here? I don't, I don't really understand because uh, they, they came over and they were like, so it's, uh, it's $30 per hour. Uh, and uh, you know, you can order all of these drinks from the menu. So in a typical girls bar, you kind of you kind of pay for the company, yes, right? Yeah, the drinks are just kind of yeah. included to keep you there. You pay to yeah. talk to girls, basically. Yeah, you basically. Th- I was trying to find the way, the best frame of reference to explain <laughs> what a girls' bar is to uh, Sydney's family because they were they were like as fish out of water as you can get. Yeah, mm. they were probably uh, just expecting a bar. It's like it's yeah. like it's like Hooters, except you don't pay for the drink; you pay for the time you're at Hooters. Yes. Yeah. So the way I explained it was okay. Stick with me for a second. Um, so you know how in America they have strip clubs, right? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> okay. I was, this, I was, I was like, like, this is like a terrible route to go down <laughs> trying to explain. That, that was the first thing that came to mind. Oh my I, God. I did not think of Hooters. Fuck, I should have said Hooters. It's like strip club um, without the stripping. <laughs> yeah, so so imagine 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 strip clubs. You have strip clubs in there, and I was like, stick with me for it, stick with me for a second. So <laughs> it's kind of like strip clubs, but instead of paying for girls to strip. Uh, you pay for girls to converse with you. Yeah. And so the girls are incentivized to be very, very friendly to the customer base <laughs> mm-hmm. and converse with you. Yeah. And um, so I, that's what I explained before going in. And uh, even explaining that, I don't think my, especially my mother-in-law was prepared for, <laughs> let's say how uh, energetic and in character the girls were going to be. Right. <laughs> POV, your Sid's mum. You're you're used to like very local, friendly Midwestern bars and stuff yeah. like that. And you come in, and there's a cute Japanese Japanese girl going like, "Ah, eat a shiny Was it like a was it like a themed one, or was it just like a bog standard? Like uh, it was like- it was a themed one. It was like a kind of like a. Uh, I, th- I think they were in like Chinese dresses and stuff like oh. that. I'm not sure what the exact theme was. All but, right. Like uh, in cheap house and stuff? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I've, I've been to like plenty of girls bars uh, because of Sydney, I should say. Probably like the only, <laughs> probably the only girl, probably the only like girlfriend that actually drags their partner to girls bars. Yeah. But uh, yeah, some girls bars can be, like, some girls bars, you can tell they're just there for the costume. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. And some girls bars, you they're there and they're actually like, really enjoying their job and in character and mm, stuff like mm. that. Um, this was the latter one. So it was like okay, a very, good. very energetic girls bar. Um, so the first thing that happens uh, that happens is I sit next to, uh, Cindy takes one side, I take the other. One of the girls comes over and uh, she asks, oh my God. <laughs> oh God. she asks if, <laughs> she asks if, uh, she asks if my mother-in-law is my girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because that's, uh, that's, I bet Sydney's mom was flattered by that. 
I just, I just like, no, 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 no. This is, this is, uh, this is my mom. This is my mom. Please, this is my mom. She's like, Okasan. And I was like, I had to like, I, I didn't know the exact word for mother-in-law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, just, um, yeah, she, uh, they kept calling Sydney's mom Bijin. <laughs> beautiful <laughs> which is just like the japanese word for like beautiful woman yeah. right and uh they um i they I, I think they complimented sydney's mom more than they complimented sydney which is <laughs> <laughs> did sydney like that or huh? was, was sydney uh, happy about that or uh what? sydney can hear it but i was i was i was i told i told i was telling sydney like halfway through they're they're like they're like really like your mom like they they're simping over your mom they're, they're, they're kind of like all the the girls here are kind of like simping over your mom, man. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. That's so funny. Did Cindy's mom enjoy it? Oh, she enjoyed the hell out yeah, of it. Yeah, I bet. Honestly, fucking amazing experience. Yeah. They, like this, Sydney took a, like a massive 50 50 in like introducing- I would have said a 90 10. Yeah, I would have said a 90 10. Okay, okay, okay. I would have said a bit more than that. It, it, was, it was very much a 90 10 kind of experience on whether it's whether they would have hated it or whether they would have like really, really liked the experience. But one thing I realized is that if you have the right girls bar, which is a toss up because- It's hard to find. It's hard to find because girls bars can be completely different vibes depending on what kind of bar you go to. Yep. Um, these girls, clearly enjoyed their job and clearly just wanted to set a good vibe. I felt bad because <laughs> we walk in and the only other person in there was this like old Japanese businessman. Well, that's, we, how, that's how they always are. That's, that's, how, how, they always are. that's how they always are. And you, you can see his face come, uh, you can see his face where a bunch of like American tourists comes in and uh, you can, he's obviously like a regular there. Um, and now all the girls are going towards and, this. And all the girls are now simping towards Sydney's mom. And he's just like, great. <laughs> but- um, oh, That's awesome. But yeah, uh, like they were very like iffy about it going in, uh, seeing the kind of vibe and seeing like, oh, what kind of what kind of place has Sydney dragged me into? Mm. Uh, but if you find the right girls bar, they are so good at setting like a good vibe and yeah, setting like a sure. friendly vibe. Yeah. Um, that's- you know, it's it's just it's just a, it's just a really fun time, mm. honestly. Mm. Uh, and Sydney's mom had a great time. I was telling her all of the compliments that all the maids were saying to her. Uh, Sydney, like now, is so acclimated to girls' bar. She walks in like a fucking mafia boss. She sits down. She knows how things work. She knows yeah. she knows exactly what to say to get like the good treatment. Right, right. Um, and we we come out and and actually one of one of Sydney uncle one of Sydney's uncles comes up to me and he goes, you know what? Probably a good thing I don't I don't live in Japan because I would spend way too minutes I would spend way too much money in bars like that, man. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh no, oh no, 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 oh, no, 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 no. Oh yeah, did you, did you tell them they could tip? Sorry, they can kind of tip in those bars. You can buy the girl strings. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, your tip. Uh, yeah. So I told them that uh, Sydney did all the tipping. She, oh, 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 she was <laughs> like, whatever you guys want, buy a drink. <laughs> Sydney, Sydney, keep complimenting my mom. <laughs> I, I, I remember I was in one of those bars one time, and, and um, I was with a friend there, and the girl was very persistent. When I was like, "What do you?" I was like, "Oh yeah, get a drink." And mm -hmm. then uh, she was like, "Don Perry on," and I was like, "No, no, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, how much is that?" She said two grand. I'm like, "No." <laughs> She's, and then I kept, I was like, just pick another drink. She's like, how about this other Dom Perry? I was like, yeah. no! <laughs> what? Yeah, and so I was explaining to my uh, mother-in-law. Uh, so Should be careful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I explained to Sydney's mom and her aunt that, you know, uh, there's like the opposite of girls bars as well. There's like host, host bars, clubs. host clubs <laughs> and host bars as well. And as soon as I, as soon as I said that, after the girls bar experience, they were like, Tell me more. <laughs> Wait, who, the mom or the dad? Uh, the, the mom and the aunt. <laughs> They're like, hmm, tell me more about this Well, there's, there's, there's two types for guys. There's right. there's hosts and then there's just guy snack bars. Yes. Where right. it's basically girls bars, they just talk to you and then maybe they compliment you and stuff. Mm. Yeah. And then hosts are more like- Hosts are like, like the one-on-one. -on -one, I'm like, here to yeah. flirt with you, make you yeah. fall in love with me. And I'm gonna like string you on as long as you keep buying drinks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it's like, it, they're, they, they're like uh, guy snack bars do exist and they're pretty common as well. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's the same in, with the girl side as well. There's girls bars and then there's kabakuras. Oh, that's right. Kabakura. Like kabakuras yeah, are, right. are like host clubs where it's like the girls are there to like sit with yeah, you yeah. and to like make you fall in love with them. So you yeah, keep buying yeah. them drinks. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, cause I honestly think if you want to like learn to practice your Japanese, um, the girls, girls bars are like, honestly a great fucking place, yeah, right? For sure. Um, honestly, you can also go to a place like Golden Guy as well, where mm. you have normally have very talkative, talkative servers. Bartenders. Why pay, 
you know, 50 bucks an hour for a private lesson when you pay 30 bucks and free alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can drink all you want. It's free alcohol. Well, it's not free alcohol. It's, th it's $30 for all yeah, you can drink. That's a dangerous mindset. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, if it's 30 bucks for an hour, it's free. Bro. Yeah. It's free. Yeah. I can get through way more alcohol than that. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? That's true. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's, it's nothing... Most of the time, nothing sleazy about it. You're just paying for company, and uh, yeah. they are. It's the mindset. It's, if you it's walk the in feeling sleazy, it's going to feel sleazy. Yeah, you go yeah, in, exactly. you're like, I'm just going to hang out, support a local business, yeah, <laughs> learn Japanese, not sleazy, yeah, establish a platonic relationship, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, a healthy non uh, <laughs> parasocial relationship. Yeah, because yeah. you know, talking to talking to some of the girls there, and uh, Sydney has talked to a lot of girls who has worked at different girls' bars as well. Mm. And a lot of the girls honestly work there just because it's like a release for them. Because a lot of the times mm -hmm. they, it's, they're like really, really extroverted and it's just the perfect job for them just to be able to like socialize yeah. and just let loose in Japan, which can sometimes be really, really hard in a lot of different like jobs and different oh, social sure. situations yeah. as well. So a lot of the times, if you find the right girls, uh, girls bars, they want to talk to you as much as you know you are looking for conversation as well. Mm -hmm. They they genuinely enjoy their job, and you know there's some there's something just nice about seeing someone who just genuinely enjoys what they do. Yeah, and are just happy to do what they do. And 100%. so that was like day one. Uh, they packed in pretty that early. Was day one. That was day one. How long uh, are they here for? They're here for a week, so okay. that's uh, going to be the most eventful long. week of their uh, life. It's not a very long time. To be it's not here. a very long time. Um, but I mean, if that was all one day, <laughs> that was, that was <laughs> then this the week is going to be fucking. Yeah, like the only reason filled. the only reason we didn't go on for longer because I did want to do, introduce them to like karaoke and you know all uh, and uh, you know other uh, just other more traditional Japanese bars maybe <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of went in on the hey, defense. There's nothing more traditional than a girls' bar. That's yeah. true. Uh, that's that's yeah. the most traditional as it yeah. gets. Honestly, how last time went, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if they asked to go to more girls bars, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Good vibes, but uh, that was day one. We packed it in early because they were jet lagged and everything like mm. that. Uh, but honestly, for like the first day of traveling from America, <laughs> that was, I thought, I thought I wouldn't have anything to say coming in to yeah. like this podcast because I was like, I'll talk about it when the trip's over. And I'm like, fuck it out. We have <laughs> so much more stories in a week or two. Yeah, yeah right. so much is happening in just one day. I'm glad they're having a good time at least, you know? I think honestly, Sydney's kind of like a bamf for just being so fearless and just being like, nope. But mom, dad, you're just gonna come here and uh, I'm not gonna try and ease you into it. Yeah. I'm just gonna throw you at the deep end. Oh uh, Cause God. this is what I wanna do. <laughs> I'll, I'll, see, I'll see if yeah. my parents like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I now have the same reaction. Yeah, you should be like, mom, dad, have you heard of a girl's mom? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> my, 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 I can't even imagine what they'll be like. I'm having a toilet. For yeah. me, it's gonna be me for once. Yeah, the, the, I, I just I just remembered as we were like going for a toilet break, there was one other like awkward moment. Uh, go on. Okay, so <laughs> we, we, we were in the girls bar and they had like a few like magazine promotions for uh, different idol groups uh, okay. in Japan. Right. And so uh, my mom asks, oh, what, what is that? And I go, oh, uh, that's like, they're promoting like an idol group in Japan. It's a pretty popular culture in Japan. And she asks, oh, what's an idol group? And I'm like, oh, that's a rabbit hole. I'm like, <laughs> how do I? How do I, how do I begin to explain this? Is this like, is this like a Chikai idol or like underground idol group or like a mainstream idol group? I'll be honest, I have no this is, even, like, even I don't know. Do you uh, want to explain the difference to me, Joey? Because I don't I, I don't, don't know. Really it's know. like imagine if BTS wasn't that popular and <laughs> they were more about catering to individual fans. It's that, the difference uh, between like is it promoting like, you know, fucking Imagine Dragons or some like lesser known like SoundCloud artist. You know, that's that's the difference. Or it's like they both have their fan bases, but one is like more, you know, in the mainstream and like, you know, on right. TV and shit. And then there are ones where it's like they play at local venues to like very small crowds, but they still have a dedicated fan base kind of thing. Right. That's the best way to explain yeah, it. Yeah, the, the best, uh, the way I ended up explaining it was like, okay, so it's kind of like, it's, it's kind of like a music group that caters towards a very specific audience that they try to get as invested in this group as possible in order to spend money. And <laughs> That's a very like, <laughs> it's a very arbitrary way of saying it. But. I, I, yeah, cause I, I was I was like, how do I explain like idol culture? And then like midway through, exp uh, midway through my shitty explanation, they, she goes, they look very young. <laughs> Well, yeah, they're typically like 19 to 25. You're, like, You're correct on that, mother. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. only really young. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she was like, yeah, they look, they look very young. And I was like, yeah. And then she was like, they look, they look like very, very young. And I was just like, 
I, I, I paused for a second and I was just like, do I want to open this can of worms? Pause for a second and I just go, yes. <laughs> 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 no, you, should, you should have just said like, oh, you know, all Japanese women look young. But there's yeah, a point where is. someone spends enough time in Japan, they're like, what's up with all the kids stuff? <laughs> 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 I've had a few friends say that when they've been here. Yeah, yeah like, it's true. So what's up with that? And I'm like, well, that is a uh, cultural can of worms yeah. that we can talk about, I don't but we're wanna, gonna be here. I don't want to explain. Yeah. For like six hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but that was, that was like, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what, other parts of Japanese culture, I'm going to have to explain. Can't wait for your for <laughs> Sydney's mom to be like, I want to go see these idol groups. Dude, I, I was having dinner with someone and uh, they, they asked me, they were like, so why does it seem like nobody's really friends here? And I'm like, okay, well, no, that's uh, that's <laughs> oh. like eight layers of culture that yeah, we yeah, to yeah, dissect. Yeah. We're like going back to school. We're talking about the work culture. <laughs> yeah. We're yeah. getting through everything. And it was just like a whole, I realized when I was speaking about it, I was like, I should have just said something dumb. Like, I don't really like friends. <laughs> <laughs> just to like, oh, I don't really want to be friends. Yeah, yeah. They, don't, they don't believe in friends. Ah, friendships over it. Yeah. I, I should have done that because I was literally, we were literally talking about it for an hour. Right. Yeah. I was like, okay, no, 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 but it's like this. <laughs> so you're working 12 hours a day, you yeah. don't get to hang out. Yeah. So that's why they force them to hang out with people. Like, it's like a whole, I, I, yeah. yeah. I, kind of, I kind of realized, oh yeah, am I being that guy? Am I being that guy that's just like going way too deep into like a topic <laughs> over yeah. like, just a simple question. Yeah. You know? Did they at all, I don't know if you had this cause I uh, went to a restaurant with someone <coughs> who was visiting mm -hmm. and I was like, I, I told them, uh, cause I was like, I, I can just order if you want. Cause yeah. I was like, I was like, they're, they're gonna freak out if you say something that they don't understand. Yeah. yeah. And he was like, why? And I was like, I don't fucking know why. Cause they, they like they like the script. They like everything that happens in the way they want it to happen. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why, but just let me order. So they don't freak out and it doesn't get weird. And then they tried to order and he, they try to take the menu and he was like, no, no, I want to keep onto it. And they were like, what? <laughs> No, this is, when, this is when we take the menu. He's sequence breaking. <laughs> He's like, no, this is, this is when we take the menu. <laughs> he was like, no, I want to I want to look at it. <laughs> and I felt I felt bad because I was like, the guy was doing like the, like, like the, yeah. yeah. Like, what, how, how does this compute? Looking around yeah. for the manager. Like genuinely, yeah. yeah. He, was like, he was like, what do I do? <laughs> I was like, just, I was like, it's okay. We'll just eat. We'll look at the menu. It's fine. Yeah. This like, is how games must feel when like speed runners start breaking the yeah, games genuinely. down. Right? Like, it's like, like oh, what, yeah. what do we do? <laughs> I've clipped into the restaurant and I've already got the meal. Yeah. For the <laughs> like, uh, yeah, it, I, that, yeah. I wonder if they'll come across that at all. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I did give them, <laughs> I did give them a little bit of advice that uh, like backfired a bit because how do you explain, <laughs> how do you explain the Japanese accent to someone who doesn't understand Katakana? I would right? say, say it in a very slow way. Like you would say- Yeah, like, like you don't say cream cheese, you say cream cheese. You just say it slower, like cream cheese, and they might, they'll put it together, right? Yeah. But yeah. Sometimes as well, the the people who you're talking to, because you obviously very clearly look foreign, yeah. they're expecting you to say it in the foreign way anyway. Yeah. Yes. So sometimes if you say it in the Japanese way, they kind of get confused, weirdly. Yeah. I, I know it sounds- Literally me every time. It sounds hard, yeah. It yeah. sounds hard to believe, but genuinely, like it's, it's like when you're, uh, like when you're in it, like you're in the UK or something, you're in like a country and then you overhear a conversation and you're like, that sounded like a different language, but it, mm -hmm. but it wasn't, right? Mm -hmm. I don't, like it's weird. I don't know how the- No, I get works. it. Like sometimes- The it, expectation um, messes with what you're like actually hearing. Yeah, so, I mean, I get that with Korean a lot. Like yeah. uh, there's, a, there's been so many instances where I would hear someone in public, like what I think is them speaking Japanese, but it's actually Korean and vice versa. Yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's bizarre every single time it happens. The, the one that's even weirder is when I think they're speaking Korean, but they're actually speaking in Japanese. No, I've heard that as well. Yeah. I thought, I th I've overheard conversations where I think they're th speaking a foreign language. Yeah. For some reason, the, how my brain heard those words, yeah. but no, they were speaking- Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> like, it's so yeah. weird. I, I get that with Vietnamese a lot. Yeah. Like every time I hear Vietnamese, especially Vietnamese, um, I, I, like, I like look up because I'm like, oh, someone's speaking Thai. And then I realize it's a completely different language. Right, it's right. like <laughs> they're saying words I should understand, mm. but it's just, it's something about it just doesn't comprehend in my mind. It's, I think what it is, is like the inflections are similar. Yeah. But the words oh, exactly themselves the yeah. are different. Like the same with Korean, like the, with Korean is like the inflection is so close to Japanese, mm. yeah. but it's just the words and like some sounds they make are just like, oh, that's not Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck is this? What the fuck is that? Yeah, I think, have you ever seen that video where it's kind of like, it's like, what English sounds like to people who don't speak English. Yes. That's exactly <laughs> I like- I love that video. That's, that video just like, 
unlocked another part of my brain to realize, oh, okay, I get it now. Yeah. You know, I, this is this is what people hear because that's kind of a very similar feeling to what I hear when I hear someone speaking Vietnamese. I'm mm. like, no, wait, <laughs> tight, no. Why, why don't I understand this? What? Yeah. It's pretty interesting when I go to Vietnam for the first time, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause uh, you're going, you're going for the first time to Vietnam this year as well, aren't you? Yes, yeah, I'm going to uh, Vietnam for my mom's 60th birthday. Cause cool. uh, for some reason, I'm the only one in my family who's never been to Vietnam. My I'm- sister has been like four. She's like hiked across Vietnam. What? Like a number of times during school, and yeah. like my parents have been like four or five times, and I'm like, oh, but the food is so. I'm like, good. where the fuck was my invite? <laughs> oh. Yeah, so I'm looking forward. I'm there for like two weeks. Southeast Asian food sounds so good. Oh, dude, Vietnam's yeah. gonna be lit. It's gonna be so good. I'm so excited for it. That's yeah. not happening for a while, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've learned my lesson. Next time, okay. Why next time, you, I'll, I'll, I'll. Why don't you recommend Google Translate? Oh, I did recommend. Google oh, okay, Translate. okay. Yeah, for like menus and stuff. Um, I was, I was just saying, just in case. Uh, you need to like enunciate something. I'm like, how can I, how can how can I explain katakana? The katakana kind of like yeah. English, you know. Yeah. And now, now, cause like now, I realize if I want to explain to someone, if they're into weeb culture, just just say it. Just be like, say it in what you think is like anime. Uh, we just turn yeah. full weeb. Just turn full weeb. And don't afraid to turn because I've seen people. The real the real I the realize I went down this route because because I've seen people go down the route of just saying the words slower, but just completely like. Keeping the English accents, yeah, yeah like, yeah. like when I've seen people like try to order like Coke or something, Coca Cola, and they say Coke, Coca Cola, and then they then they try to say co- uh, slowly, and it's, it's still like Coca Cola, and you know it, that doesn't register. Yeah, but if yeah, you yeah. say Corda, you know, which is like <laughs> which a is more Coke, like yeah. yeah, a more Japanese like katakana kind of accent, people get that. And the best way I can kind of like describe that is that it just sounds what you think weeb sound like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain I, I, it. I had, that, I had that happen to a uni friend of mine who I brought to Japan for the first time. And yeah. we were at a Starbucks and he wanted to get a milk tea. Oh. And uh, and he was at the front and he was like, oh, can I get one milk tea please? You know, super Australian. Yeah. And the woman was just like, uh, Sumimasen, said, what the fuck did you just say? Yeah. And then he turns to me and he's like, how do you say milk tea in Japanese? And I'm like, miruku tea. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, here's, here's the thing, right? And so he turned yeah. around and like, miruku tea? It's just like, oh, miruku tea. Here's, here's, what, I've, here's what I've learned from, from learning a language, right? If yeah. you don't speak the language, do not say other words other than the thing you are trying to convey. Yes. Like yeah. if you want a milk tea at a Starbucks, don't say, can I have a milk tea? Just say yeah. milk tea. Yeah. yeah. Because then, what you're trying to, you're, you're putting emphasis on the communication of just this one thing. You're mm. not, cause it's gonna scare them if you say all this other shit. That they don't that they're, they're like, oh, oh, what about a milk tea? Like, does you want me to throw it away? Like, <laughs> like yeah. uh, you know what I mean? Like obviously they're not there, but like you're adding in confusion. Well, if they might just, not even hear the word, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it's like, just say the thing you want. I yeah. know it's gonna make you feel like an idiot, but you are, you don't speak the language. You're just basically speak, a toddler. Speak like what you would put into a Google yeah. search bar, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just exactly. like, just the yeah, keywords yeah. only. That's all you need. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Japan is getting a lot more katakana in its vocab in yes. everyday yeah. use. And, yeah. But it's, it's such a gamble. You never know which words they're using. Yeah. yeah. Like certain words you're like, oh, why? okay, they chose this word. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, like they use the word, um, sometimes like they use the word uh, assist sometimes. Assist, yeah. Assistful. Sometimes yeah. it's like, why yeah, that yeah. word? Like, why <laughs> the fuck assist? Like, why was that the word you chose to bring I over? I think that's probably because like, of sports. Maybe, yeah. yeah. And like yeah. task. They use, tasuku. They yeah. use Tasuku a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. They use Maruchi Tasuku as well. <laughs> <laughs> Which is multitask. Yeah. And they use Sapoto. Yeah. Sapoto. Yeah. Oh, sapoto. sapoto. Yeah, it's yeah. just weird the words they choose to bring over yeah. and the words that they they often uh, try and integrate into the language. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, not just en- it's not just English words either that they do that for. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, true, you true, know, true. They use like Arubaito, which is the German yeah. word. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, a, that's an odd choice. Or like uh, fucking Pung, all right, for bread. Oh yeah, oh, yeah they do. And pimang yeah. as well for like uh, bell peppers. Like those are all European uh, words. I didn't know that. Yeah. I know the bell pepper one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then luckily in Starbucks, you you could say soy milk. Yeah, <laughs> soy milk. Soy milk. You don't have to say- Don't, uh, don't say soy milk, say soy milk. Soy milk. Yeah. You don't have to say gunyu, which uh, it's just so annoying to say. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, it's just a, a necessarily <laughs> long word for- Gunyu. Gunyu for soy milk. <laughs> it's just- No, gunyu is just milk. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's a tonyu. Tonyu, yeah. yeah. Tonyu. You can just say, 
soy milk. Yeah. And they're like, damn. Oh, we're like bougie. Ooh, this kind of kind of motherfucker. Them, them, yeah. That's like, that's like, uh, like fromage for us <laughs> in English. It's like, it's like the fancy version of cheese. Yeah. Omelet du fromage in France. And they're like, soy milk rate. <laughs> Oh, get a load of this guy. Oh. Get the soy milk lattes, dude. Oh, damn. This <laughs> Sometimes you do go to like French places and you see, actually see like katakana fromage. Yeah, yeah that's, fromage. that's when you get fucked though. Cause yeah. you're like, you're reading the katakana at a French restaurant and it's katakana for French. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, fuck, I, I didn't know this yeah. shit in French. <laughs> That but fucks it, me up so many times. But like, like, if it was in English, if it was like in the the Roman alphabet French, I can normally kind of figure out a little bit what yeah. they're talking about. Cause yeah. I'm like, I know these letters kind of the noise yeah. they make, so I can kind of put it together. But if you see like cuatro fromage, you're yeah. just like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I had a I had a friend who uh, uh, white guy married to an Asian woman, and mm. when he went to I think it was like France or Germany, mm. he said like, oh yeah, it is a little bit of an advantage knowing English because you can kind of figure out roughly kind of what the stuff is from the words. Right. Because you can yeah. read it. Yeah. Like you can, yeah. maybe you don't, maybe not German, but like French, you can kind of figure out roughly what they're mm. maybe saying. Yeah. You're yeah, like, yeah. ah, it's a, it's an omelet, I think. <laughs> it's like an omelet. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's an advantage. And, and whereas, you know, if you're used to reading Chinese characters or Japanese, it's a lot harder to be like, wow, okay, what the fuck am I reading? Yeah, yeah exactly. You, you don't even have like anything close to a frame of reference to like mm. build off of, you and, know? And then on top of that, we're, like at least Japan is great with signs. They put signs everywhere yep. and symbols. They love yeah. putting symbols everywhere. In in the UK, holy shit, we don't got shit. You got nothing in the countryside. <laughs> Good luck. That's true actually. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't realize that until you said that. Like yeah. you don't realize how like almost foreigner friendly Tokyo is at, at times mm -hmm. with how how good it is for helping you get around. Yeah. Uh, and and how how they prefer to use like one well, pictures outside and, and plastic models and stuff. Mm, like, yeah. dude, it's so nerve wracking going into like a restaurant in the UK or, or in France. Cause you're like, bro, I don't know what the menu is. I have no idea. <laughs> so I can't read any of and, it. And, 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 because a lot more often they don't even show you the menu yeah. outside. So you're just like, I don't fucking know if it's good. I go, yeah. I'll find out when I get in. And then sure. it's no pictures. Yeah. Not that I needed pictures. I'm not a toddler and I know what the stuff is, but it would be nice to kind of see the portions and the size. Yeah, and what we're kind like of a frame with. of reference. Yeah, right? what we're yeah. working with here. I want yeah. to see, because sure. sometimes people make like certain dishes and they look like ass. And then other places that the picture looks amazing and like, yeah. damn, it looks good. I want yeah, that thing. For sure, for oh. sure. Yeah, but uh, that's that's been pretty much everything I've been up to the last few days. Nice. What have you been up to? Um, <laughs> I got a new PC. Nice. Oh, yeah, Cause your PC is breaking for some reason. So I, okay, this is my, I got a, I, I reached out to a uh, sponsor, PC specialist. We work with a lot. I was kind of mm -hmm. like, hey, my stream keeps crashing. Mm. Uh, it, I think it's because I had like a graphics card that was bad. Cause yeah, I, yeah. I had an old PC. And I got a new PC because I, oh. I wanted to build a new one because it kept crashing. Right. And I thought, okay, well, I'm going to change everything except the graphics card. <laughs> and I got the new PC and I built it and I had problems starting that one. Right. Yeah. It went all wrong. I had the wrong I had the wrong RAM. It was, man, it was a whole thing. I got it working. I had the same <clears throat> issue. It would just crash and it would like mm. all, what would happen is, is like, like blue screen or what? No, no, no. I, I would, um, wouldn't even do that. I'd be streaming. All the screens would go black. The right? fuck? All right. And then it will come back. Uh -huh. The stream will be ended because the stream is rendered through the graphics card. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. it'll stop streaming. It'll <clears throat> stop every application. And it'll also act up weird if I try to restart the stream. It'll kind of struggle with games. Right. So I kind of mm -hmm. just have to restart my PC. Right. And it would just keep doing this whenever I played a game that was pretty intense. Mm. And I was like, fuck this, man. I, I, it happened once or twice. I was like, that's it. I'm done. I'm like, I sh I, I'm just going to get one that is completely brand new, mm. has nothing to do with me. I'm not touching it. I don't want to have anything because clearly I'm a fucking curse. So I got a new PC and I started setting it up. You know how it is. It's kind of exciting when you get a new PC and you say, yeah. mm. like, mm. I am going to make sure the file management is clean as fuck this time. <laughs> and in a month, it's not going to be clean. Yeah. yeah. But you're like, you're in your head, you're like committed to it. Yeah. And it's kind of exciting because you kind of get everything fresh, mm. everything super fast, it all yeah. works. Yeah, for sure. Set it all up. Everything was fine. Three days later, uh, I I shut down the PC and it had an update, but I was like, I, I'm pretty sure I did the updates. So I just shut it down and I went to bed. I came back in the morning and it was on the boot screen. And I was like, what the fuck? I shut it down. Okay. And it was just stuck on it. Just wouldn't move. Oh no. And I was like, what? And I'm like, oh man. <laughs> oh man. So I try everything that I know. Yeah. yeah. I try to fix it in every single way and I'm just having no luck. And I, but I know, cause it's, it's booting 
and I can get to all the Windows repair stuff. I'm like, okay, maybe worst case scenario, I think I just have to reinstall Windows, but I don't mm. want to do that because I've already set everything up. And, and I'm just like, oh man. So I contact them. I'm like, hey guys, the PC is great. It's fa- it's awesome, it's beautiful. <laughs> Camp management, <clears throat> it's beautiful. 4090 is so good. Yeah, 4090, beautiful. Right. It's absolute monster. <laughs> It'll run TFT amazing. <laughs> 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 um, and um, so I asked them, I'm like, hey, it's, it's not working. <laughs> it's really expensive and new. Can you help me figure it out and stuff? And so they got, I got on call with a, a very nice British man uh, and he would he walk me through all the stuff and he was like, yep, it looks like you got to reinstall Windows. I was like, fuck. And he was like, yeah, but it's like, it's, it's fine. That's good. That's the best thing. I'm like, mm. why is that the best? He's like, well, cause you if, it was, replace Paul. if yeah. it was anything else, it means it's all fucked. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> Okay, well, I think it's not that bad. So I, yeah, I had to reinstall Windows again and do that. So for the past like three days, I've just been reinstalling everything again. And yeah, dude, it's so finicky. Cause like, man, if it was just reinstalling software, it wouldn't be a bad idea, but it's like, I got to reset up all my stream stuff and it takes mm. so long. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. And there's always something you're missing. Yep, and it's always. always like, and then you're like, you're doing something and you're like, fuck, I didn't install that. I gotta do that again. And it just takes like hours. Like yeah. I don't yeah. want to spend six hours doing this. And especially not when I've already done it. It's, a, it's funny you say that you have like a PC curse because the PC you built for me like three, four years ago, I haven't had a single problem with. Yeah, but it's kind you of know, insane. Like, like, you know, you know, Joey. What if what have you been using that PC for though? You know, I feel like I am I am I am burning my. You are PC. pushing it to the limit. <laughs> I, sure. I regularly like push my PC like fully, but I still think it's breaking way more than it even should. If I'm doing yeah. that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you were playing like a AAA game a lot, your graphics card is probably being fully used. Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. So I, I don't understand. It shouldn't be doing this. That's why I'm a console gamer. Baby. Yeah, <laughs> no console, console gamers don't have to worry Thank about you, shit. Nintendo. <laughs> Just plug. Plug and play, baby. Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Well, yeah. it's because I'm, I'm a lot of the time I'm streaming, uh-huh. and so you're streaming, and then you're running the game, and the stream is running off the graphics card. Mm. But then I also like to record locally, yes, uh, just because stream when you when you upload a stream to Twitch, yeah, uh, they absolutely murder the quality. Yeah, yeah. like it, it's even worse than YouTube. Like mm-hmm. it's so bad. Mm. Yeah, because uh, you can only do six megabytes per second, which is like. <laughs> It looks fine in 1080p, but you can't upload anything higher like yeah. at all. And, and um, it'd be nice because I'd like to, um, but it just means that certain games look like ass. Mm. Like I don't know if you've ever watched a stream of like Vampire Survivors. Oh either, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, where yeah. it just goes like, it's just goes like, to, like oh, pixel I survivors. see every pixel. Uh, yeah, you're like, oh, there are four pixels on the screen. <laughs> this is like, cause the Twitch compression just, just like, it just yeah. cannot handle certain things on, yeah, like yeah. When, there's a lot of stuff on screen. It can't do it. I, I always locally save my streams as well. So yeah, that. so I locally yeah. save it because if I want to make a YouTube video out of it, which I do, there's like a, a ton of benefits. One being it looks way better and you can record a much higher bit rate. Yep. Uh, you can also record a different resolution, which I'm going to do now. I can mm. record it in 2K mm. instead of 1080p. Mm. So I can, the, vi- the videos will just look better. Yeah. And it, the reason why that you're like, I can't like, oh, a 1080p is fine. Yeah, but it's like future proofing. Like mm. it used to be that like 1080p was always fine. But mm. now if you play a 1080p video on a TV, it looks like ass. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well, because everyone has a 4K TV that's like 60 inches, mm. right? So I'm just kind of future proofing it. Yeah, also, sure. I like to separate all the audio channels. This is so nerdy. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> but like, just so that if Muradan wants to in post, he can edit all the audio levels. Like if the game's too loud, he can yeah, turn it yeah, down. Yeah. Make my yeah. Own. It's just like a whole thing. Mm. I don't know. 1080p to 4K. Kind of, kind of get it, kind of don't. On a TV, you <laughs> notice the difference. Cause, because Maybe yeah, not you don't with, notice it on your phone. With a movie, you won't notice, mm-hmm. right? Because DVDs, they're like expertly like uh, made and you don't get this dog shit compression that YouTube does. Mm, yeah. Like our videos in 4K don't look like 4K because YouTube compresses the shit out of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, but there's always gonna be compression online. No, right? I, I know, I know, yeah. I know. But like if you watched a movie on a streaming yeah, it's, it's So it's, like, what, what are you trying to do is like, if you upload like, a higher quality video to YouTube, it'll compress it like like a stop down, right? So what you're trying to do is, is by doing a higher quality is like, you're trying to get ahead of like the yeah. YouTube compression. Mm. So the 1080p doesn't look like 720. So that like, you know, so that when you upload something in 2K, it'll look much better in 1080p. Yeah. When yeah. someone watches it, right? Yeah, I guess because like, for me, I've tested around with this before and I've noticed even if I have a 1080p video, because most anime are in 1080p, that's what yeah, I work yeah. with. Um, then that's fine for you. That makes like no difference. Yeah, it makes yeah. Them, it doesn't really make as big of a difference for anime as I th- I feel for like other film, you know, yeah. like live action stuff. Mm. Oh, for live action, it's like a, it's, yeah. it's night, night and day. day. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've tested it, and I've like tested 
uploading 4K rendered videos for a 1080p video, uh, which should should just make no difference because all you're doing is upscaling the pixels and it looks better because if you upload in 4K, YouTube just compresses, yeah, YouTube compresses it less. Compresses it. Yeah. You know? Because mm. then people who can watch it in 4K are able to watch it in basically a less compressed version of 1080p. Yeah. 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 Uh, also for like, if you're ever doing anything with like actual cameras, the reason why you want high, re high resolution, which is super useful is that you can punch in and it doesn't look like shit. Yeah, like digital you can, you zoom, can zoom nicely. You can yeah. like yeah, that's zoom useful. in the frame a lot. Yeah, um, that's, that's very why, useful. Like sometimes uh, if you ever like, you know, people's like, well, 8K camera, why the fuck would you ever need that? It's like the one benefit is that like, let's say if uh, me and Joey are in the same frame, we're next to each other and it's 8K, you could zoom in on me and it would still look like 2K. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it wouldn't look like blurry as shit. Yeah. Um, sorry, this is like whole technical stuff, but I mean, it's <laughs> well, like, like, so okay. not interesting, but it's just okay. like, and I'm sure there's some camera experts who can, who are like, no, oh, that's not how it works, but mm. it's like, you know, okay. very as, That's as, how it feels. As, yeah. a, as a tech nerd, do you think we'll need more than 4K eventually? Do you, do you think mm. we'll get up to like, you know, 16K, 32K TVs and stuff like that? Well, uh, I'm, I, well, I, I don't think, I, well, I don't think it'll, I mean, they'll, they'll certainly be available. Cause, but I don't, I don't know, because I, people, I remember back in the day when people like- People said that about 1080p. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, like back in the day, like early YouTube, when like the most you could go was like 720 or even like 480. Mm -hmm. We were like, oh, 720 is, is wow, that's HD. That's, yeah. That looks good. Well, and mean, now we're like, oh, 1080, I, I, that's I, not enough. I certainly think the cameras uh, will definitely keep getting higher resolution just because it's more useful again for editing yeah. and yeah. being able to manipulate the image. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not talking about like the editing thing. The I'm, talk I'm talking about me like using watching. my eyes. Yeah. Probably, because I mean, it'll probably get there, but it yeah. probably will be like such such diminishing returns. Yeah. Especially 4K to 8K is like, I'm, I'm, dude, it's barely any difference. Because like, mm. for, okay, for me, like I see people freaking out over like, you know, 4K versus- 4K 10. does look fucking good. Like yes. straight up, it does look really good. Like to me, okay, with like with like my opinion, right? It, like I'd be I'd be blind to say that it doesn't look better. Four K does like objectively look better. Yes. Mm. Um, but like in terms of like how much it makes a difference to like whatever like my immersion or mm. something like that, it's just it's it doesn't like the the amount the amount of like new pixels and the amount of resolution you're adding just doesn't feel as different to when 1080p was just introduced versus like 360p. Yeah, And mm. it just feels like the, the the returns are getting more diminishing the like- Well, yeah, it's we like along, it, right? now it's way more about, you know, how is it filmed and how is it, uh, how are the colors? Yeah, is I was, it, I was like about to say you like, know, like, you know. It's, it's, it's way more about lighting and colors yeah. now. Yeah. That's why there's a giant focus on HDR. And oh no, yeah, stuff. I totally agree where I think like, from from like my my own personal like perspective, if something is lit and filmed correctly in 1080p, it, oh, that, it looks way better than a way shit. more important 4K, yeah. than just having like a 4K resolution. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, if you can combine both, then fucking fucking incredible. Mm. Yeah. But I feel like this focus on just having something that's like higher resolution 4K. Yeah. I'm just like, to me, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Yeah. And uh, it's crazy how much lighting is everything. Yeah. Right? It's really like insane. Mm. Yeah. Uh, like the, because you know, when you're starting out on YouTube, you're like, I'm gonna get a little Sony little camera, just a little, get a little, yeah. and then you're like, why does it look like ass? Yeah. <laughs> and like, why does every other YouTuber's videos look so good and mine looks so dog shit? Oh, it's because I'm using a tiny fucking desk lamp. It's because I have yeah. no light. I'm also, the sun is behind me yeah. and uh, I have a flickering light in the back. You're just like, oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this fucking sucks. <laughs> You're like, I have to make the whole room well balanced and I have to make sure I'm lit and yeah. then the background's lit differently. Otherwise it just yeah. looks like found footage. Well, yeah, cause like my, you know, like my stream setup is like, I have two lights for my face. Yeah. And then the the rest of the room is lit differently. Mm. And it's yeah. like, it looks, it's insane how different it looks. Mm. Like if, if I turn the lights off and I never showed you with the lights on, you would think, oh, it's not that bad. I turn them on, you're like, oh, whoa. It's like a lot different. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's annoying. Cause you're like, as a YouTuber, you want to always improve your videos and you want to, mm -hmm. well, I suppose if you're a good video, I guess <laughs> a, a, a good YouTuber a should good always- YouTuber. Oh, I'm not a, just, uh, listen, if, you, if you're a professional at anything or you'd claim to be, you should be always looking how to get better at it, right? Of course. Like, you know, like fucking uh, Van Gogh didn't paint one picture. He's like, I'm done boys. That's it. No more. I'm gonna, yeah, that's it. I, I made it. You know, like yeah. you always want to improve, right? Especially yeah. if you're passionate about it. Absolutely. And the thing that sucks about being a YouTuber is that like, you're like, okay, I want to upgrade my audio. And you're like, holy shit, this is complicated. How the, mm. to get like 10% better audio, I have to learn like 100% 
more worth of like information than yeah. I already had. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. pay like with, 10 times the price as well. Yeah. And pay like quadruple the price. Yeah. 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 Especially with camera gear. Oh my God, cameras and lighting. It, it's, it's insane how exponentially it goes up for like, yeah, again, diminishing returns. Yeah, yeah. Like you can look like Marcus Brownlee, but do you have the money of Marcus <laughs> Brownlee? And more importantly, do you have somebody who knows how to then use that stuff? Because yes. you yeah. can buy these like cinema red cameras, but if you if you don't got a good lighting guy and a good and a good uh, like person who knows how to do all the coloring and the software, yeah. bro, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Which I don't. Yeah, no. which is why it's it's weird seeing a diff like just like my philosophy, which is isn't always about making things, let's say, look the most highest resolution and stuff mm. like that. I'm more, I'm like way more focused on like writing and like just editing. The content yeah, I mean, I think because yeah. you're so focused on anime, yeah, yeah and yeah. you don't show your face in all your videos. Like it, it doesn't matter. Like it's, it's kind of mm. like it's kind of like the uh, you know Nintendo and Microsoft versus like the uh, sorry the Nintendo versus the Microsoft and Sony route. You yeah. know, fucking you got like the PS5 and the Xbox Series yeah. X. Or whatever that's just like power more power and then Nintendo's, more pixels and then nintendo's like i'm gonna do weirdo shit let's uh but it's like it's like when you have those like in my mind i see it as like let's say you have a youtube vlog yeah uh, and it's from like a smaller channel and they've just started it's like it's god damn like the camera work everything is just fucking awful and you're oh, like, yeah. there's a certain charm towards that there is though. a bit of a charm but also if you just straight up can't see what they're trying to film you're like great you just wasted like uh, this entire point. Like I can't see anything and it's all- I'm mad. gonna be opening a Pokemon cards today in a dark room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, here's my head. Yeah, I've oh seen so God, many videos of that. Oh my God, I got a Black Lotus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I I know, there's a charm. I, I, don't, I don't think. I don't think. A charm content, doesn't get you to like. Yeah, five I don't million. think a content creator can always remain that kind of level. But like, I would something about having seeing like a new YouTuber or something, and them having like the shittiest fucking mic that peaks oh, yeah. every oh, yeah. five seconds. I mean, look at Tyler <laughs> <laughs> Something about that. I'm just like, you know what? Maybe this is peak YouTube. I don't know anymore. You know, yeah. this but, is. Uh, yeah, I think I think an important part of being a, a YouTuber, especially one that that does well, is that you you make you upload your video and you're like that's good and then you yeah. watch another person's video like oh man this is way better than what i just uploaded yeah and then you're like how did they do that and then you start just figuring it out yeah for sure go. yeah speaking of like you know higher resolution better technology and stuff like that mm -hmm. i did also see avatar 2 as well <laughs> yeah, we talked about this last time right yeah but you, yeah. you didn't really go full into it right? yeah 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 i didn't really get fully into it and what's your rating I uh, kind of got a lot of shit for his take on Avatar. I did. People would people were clowning on me for calling it kind of like boring. Right. Yeah. I said the visuals look good, but the story was boring. And I'm like, Connor, I agree. Yeah, put it there. I agree, put Connor. It there. I agree. Put it there. Put it there. I gotta def I gotta Gun defend my Connor <laughs> agreeing with one another. I gotta defend my boy during I, his Avatar. Take. Anyone who pretends that that story is like. Amazing. I just don't. I. I. They have to be capping. Like they. I don't <laughs> trust anything they say. Because. Because like I remember Connor saying that he fell asleep during like the middle portion of Avatar and didn't miss anything. And I'm just like, ha, Connor monkey moment. And I remember sitting there three hours in, and I'm like, fuck. I wish I fell asleep during the middle. The, the middle is straight up like nothing. Like you yeah. don't need to be awake for it. I'm, right. I'm like at all. Damn. Yeah. Because I'm like, because. I remember during the middle portion, which was, I think the portion that really like, that that was the portion that was like the hardest to get through for me. Mm. And Wait, before, before they basically I basically start- Let's remake Avatar 1, but with yeah. a new, like new Navi. Before I start shitting on Avatar, mm. I don't think it's a bad film. <laughs> no, but it's not like the absolute masterpiece, I, whatever. I don't yeah. think it's a bad film. I just, I just walked out of it being like, fuck man. Three, that was three hours of my life, man. <laughs> Holy shit, that was a long three hours of my life because uh, the middle portion was a very, very nice tech demo is what I felt. It's, it's, it had some of like the most breathtaking shots I've mm. seen in film, mm -hmm. especially in the cinema. Um, but I'm just like, this is, this, is a, this is a fucking Sony Bravia tech demo that I'm seeing <laughs> just to show how good the TV is yeah. right now. I, uh, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I stand by what I said. I just think it's, it's, it's a good, it's a solid movie. The visuals carry a lot of that and yeah. the story's just kind of meh. Yeah, because like- I, I don't was, really care much for the characters. Because I was thinking, mm. there's, there's, I really, really, really want to like Avatar. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah, because like if like I was I was looking at it and I'm just like this is this is almost an isekai. You know, this is this is almost an isekai. This should be 
my film, you know. Joey, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong, Joey. It's just, it just the, doesn't have the reincarnation uh, bit. But he fucking wakes up in another world. He's he's a totally different being. It he's doesn't a, have the reincarnation bit. Therefore, it is nothing like it is a guy. Do you but like? They, did you like the characters? Did you like that it was all blue people? Did you? Um, you're a fan of blue people. I, <laughs> I fucking hate blue. Okay, here, here's 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 my here was more like my biggest problem with Avatar two. It wasn't. The, it wasn't so much the story. It was the fact that it was three hours long. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, because I think round about 30 minutes in, mm. I was like, I think I know every major story beat that's going to happen in this story. Yeah, And I was sure. completely right. Everything I thought was going to happen just happened. So mm. what I was, so in my mind, I was just like, okay, I know we need to set up the bad guy. We need to like do this. And it's like a fish out of water. But I'm just here for the, like I, I I I knew all of all I knew all of this was going to happen. So in my mind, I was just rush. I was like kind of like subconsciously wanting it to rush itself to be like, right. okay, I know what's going to happen. Can we just get to the payoff that I know you are setting up? Because I, I I know I know what you need to do to like set up the bad guy and set up the action scenes and something like that. I'm just like, mm -hmm. can we just get to the action scenes faster? And I don't I don't feel like the story kind of was good enough to be three hours long, to keep me engaged the entire time to get to the payoff, which was like fucking two, uh, two hours in. And by that mm. point I was already mentally very fatigued. So I was, <laughs> I, I, th I think fatigued is the right word. Cause I felt, yeah, yeah, I, I felt fatigued watching the middle portion of Avatar <laughs> 2. Do you know what I felt like? It well, felt like a TV series more than it did a film mm, in, in some yeah, sense. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, because like, if if this was a TV series, I think I would have enjoyed it more because it if it was like three hour long episodes versus just marathoning three episodes at once. I could I could have like taken a break and something like that. Yeah, you basically watched about six to seven episodes of anime, like <laughs> yeah, back to back. Yeah, right. <laughs> if you think about I watched, it, I basically, pretty, you almost binged a series, like a season. Basically I watched a season long, <laughs> I watched a season long anime. You episode. could watch all of Golden Boy in that time. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, cause I, I feel like, you know, I could see what he was trying to do with kind of setting up this family drama and mm. stuff like that. Uh, and I really, really want to be invested in this world. Because one thing I will say is that it truly got me immersed in this world of mm. Avatar. One thing that I think Avatar's biggest strength is every time I watched an iteration of the film, you totally get immersed in this world that mm. James Cameron has like set up. And right. I think it's like truly amazing um, that he can get you to like, kind of like, yeah, immerse you this deeply. Cause I, I, I don't think I can think of another film that immerses me this deeply into another world. Um, I just wish the story was a bit more exciting. <laughs> did you, did you feel that way about Dune? Hmm? Did you feel that I way about I felt that Dune? way about Dune as well. Right, I um, Dune a lot. Yeah, mm. and Dune had, Dune, Dune was pretty long as well, wasn't it? Like two and mm, two I think it was hours? just over two, just over two. It was about two hours. It was about two hours. I don't know, like Dune didn't feel as long, even though I don't think it had as many like, action set pieces. As yeah, Avatar like not that did. not that much happened in the Dune movie. Yeah. It's kind of just setting up the world. But well, yeah. I mean, it's fucking epic. I mean, it was yeah, only it was the first sick. third of the first book, right? Yeah, so, it's yeah. sick. Yeah, because I think, I think the difference between Dune and Avatar <clears> is that <throat> they both have like very, very interesting worlds. Mm. Avatar just focus, Av Avatar just chooses to focus on none of the stuff I think is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, right. Avatar is like set, like I think the entire like background premise of Avatar is really fucking interesting. Mm. Like you have um, you have this world where earth is dying um, and I'm gonna slightly spoil Avatar 2, mm. uh, but uh, the main villain from Avatar 1 comes back. Okay. Uh, because what happens I is that, like that, yeah. I See, I, I didn't like the fact that this was such an interesting concept that they just did not fucking utilize at all. Mm. So what happens is the main villain from Avatar 1 comes back and that's because just before his final like suicide mission, he stored his memories and sent his memories back to Earth to be- Was this like the Matrix? Yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. kind of. So, so they like he- an Avatar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So his memories is implanted in this new Avatar, right? Oh, okay. I don't think this is a spoiler because this is literally in the trailer. Um, and I, that to me, that's a fucking interesting yeah, concept. Yeah, that's cool. The kind of morality of being like, oh, I'm a new human being who's kind of a clone of this original one, but not really. Yeah. And I'm like, there are so many interesting fucking avenues you could take yeah. with just his like, 
but just being a person that is kind of a clone that has woken up in a fucking alien they body. They could have gone down like the ghost in the shell right? Yeah, yeah. And, nice. then, and then he was just like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not the same person, but I am. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Bad person. Okay, I'm gonna shoot all the blue people now. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Fuck him, yeah, he man. Yeah, he doesn't question. He doesn't question yeah, anything. Any, yeah, oh, and like, I'm nuts. like, yo, if I woke up as like- but an, I, I guess that's like maybe his personality. That would be the argument. He's where so he jaded that he, like it doesn't even cross his he's mind. He's so militarily yeah. focused that yeah, he doesn't. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I yeah I yeah I'm, I'm, I, I too frank I wanted him to kill the kids I <laughs> I I, I did not like the kids at all I and I, I feel like it's so hard to make kids likable in movies. Yeah. Because you know, they're kids, they're, they're little shits. Yeah. But my God, I had no interest in Jake Sully's children. I no. just did not care. No, no, I I agree. I think one one of the things that really, I really noticed was that it was three hours long. Um, and I Two said, hours about fucking kids. Yeah, two hours about fucking kids. And well, not fucking kids, but <laughs> the fucking yeah, kids. Bro, bro, rephrase that, yeah, please. The, <laughs> two, two hours about the kids and somehow in the two hours, I think because the cast was so big, mm. it just didn't, didn't give me enough time. <laughs> it didn't give me enough time to care about the kids. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, maybe I, maybe I, they I just weren't likeable. I, 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 I don't know. With their personalities, there's no amount of time would make me like that. Right. I just I just don't care. Mm. Yeah. I, I, just, I just didn't care. That's, mm. that's my verdict. Yeah, I just, mm. it's such an interesting, amazing sci-fi world that James Cameron has set up and it just- God, I wish James Cameron just made something else. I wish, I wish so too. I, I think James Cameron has like a hard on for water. I don't know, <laughs> something. Appar have, apparently this movie has to break 2 billion to break even. Yeah, which it's looking like, like since, 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 since the last time, um, it's doing pretty well. Well, so it's like, it's like 1.7 bill right now, I think. Yeah. Like yeah. Isn't that insane though, just to get 2 billion to break even? Yeah. Like, what an insane number. God damn, man. Yeah, but have you seen like, I, James Cameron is like an incredible filmmaker and I really like, if anyone has seen the behind the scenes of Oh no, the it's abyss, insane. Yeah, it's insane. Mm. Yeah, it's the it's fucking insane that, you know, the amount of times he've just he's just like wanted to do something that doesn't exist. So he's like, I'm just gonna invent the technology to yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Just because I want to do it in my film. And then this technology just ends up revolutionizing the entire fucking film industry. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, what the fuck? Again, this is no slight on him as a director. He's, he's yeah. clearly a, an extremely talented guy and a genius at yeah. making films and technology. But man, I just don't care about Avatar. I, yeah. We're mostly bashing the I, writers. I will, <laughs> I will still watch Avatar 3 when it I comes will, out, I will only to see, I'm like, I've watched both of these films. So I guess I'll just see what happens. So here's yeah. the question, is it worth, I, after hearing your guys' opinions on it, do you think I should still go and watch it? Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It depends on Avatar three and four. Cause I'm- uh, uh, You gotta have an opinion on it. Yeah, sure, I kind of want to have an yeah, opinion. But I, I also opinion. don't want to waste three hours of my life. Cause I, I felt mm. like I'm going to, okay. So I should had- Should I just watch like a Cliff Notes version of it? <laughs> just- Should I just watch clips on YouTube? Go into the movie <laughs> an hour and a half in. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be late. <laughs> yeah. I'll spend an hour and a half buying popcorn, getting dinner somewhere, and then I'll just be like, "Oh yeah, I have a movie." Because god, god damn, like some of the, some of the imagery in in the middle, which uh, in the middle was fucking beautiful. But mm. after about two scenes, I was like, "Okay, I understand now. It's pretty." Can we get to? Uh, can we get back yeah. to the story? Right. Um and. Yeah, I said last time that I don't mm. think the visuals would have, you know, it, it is the best looking film I've ever seen, but I don't, th I didn't think the visuals could blow my mind as much as seeing Avatar one did. Mm. And yeah, that's how I felt. Mm. It was, it was good, but okay. nothing mind blow, mm. didn't blow my mind like the first time I saw Avatar one, but that's just because film technology just looks so good now. Yeah, you know? and it's so hard. Okay. Um, James Cameron, if you're watching this, which you're probably not, you've made an incredible world and you, it's a world with so much potential for really interesting ideas that you can take the story. Mm. Um, Come on to the please. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> James Cameron, don't fucking come yeah. here. <laughs> please, uh, please do, you know. Keep, this, doing, this, keep this, doing you. This is my personal opinion. If you could take Avatar 3 and 4 in some other direction other than Invading people bad, blue people good. Then I would, I would, I would love that because mm. I really want to get invested into Avatar, and All I right. think he has the potential. Yeah, yeah. for sure. You should make an isekai one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you write? Can you write an isekai, please? Yeah. Uh, the Last of Us show is pretty good. Oh, did you watch that? Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, I haven't played the games, but the show's fucking good. Okay, it's very good. You should watch it. 
I mean, the games, okay, here's, here's the thing about The Last of Us. Tell me the thing about The Last of Us. They would have to fuck up really hard to make The Last of Us show bad. Because I yeah. feel like The Last mm. of Us game is already a HBO show with that's, gameplay. That's true, but yeah. I, I think that there is still that, you do still have to kind of translate certain things to a screen that are a bit hard to do. Oh, um, for sure, yeah. And I think also, obviously, you know, you've got to get these, you've got to make people fall in love with these main characters again. Yeah. Mm. Um, and all you but, need to do is just take the writing from the game. It's well, they, yeah. There are some some sentences that are straight from the game. Yeah. Mm. Um. But yeah, I mean, Pedro Pascal is like amazing. Okay. Yeah. He's yeah, so true. fucking good. Mm. Yeah. He's I, everything I've seen him in. He's just been the go. And also, he's the, he's a really good meme. The one where he's crying and laughing. Oh, that oh, one. Oh, yeah. Where's that one from? <laughs> That's from a like a Zoom acting class that he's doing. And the director's like, okay, show them somebody who's. Uh, happy, but then some, like it was like some kind of motivation where something good, uh, bad happens and they don't know how to deal with it. Right, he, right, just, right. he just literally just goes, <laughs> like that. I mean, it's really, the full clip is even weirder. Right, it's pretty fun yeah. though, okay. uh, but it's so good. Uh, please watch it. It's, right. you won't it's, it's only like one episode out right now. Right? Uh, one episode out at the time of recording, dating or episode. Uh, but yeah, no, even the one episode was, it was so fucking okay. good. Yeah. I, I, I would bet a lot of money that it's gonna keep being great because I, they would really have to do something dumb to fuck this up. Mm. Yeah, uh, but it's so a, far it's great. It's, it's a pretty simple story. I haven't. Yeah. I haven't. Uh, simple, uh, simple story. Complex characters, you know. Um, and That's I think, usually the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And I think <laughs> it could be Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's just so nice when HBO does something. They're so fucking good at making TV shows. Yeah, yeah. Except for Velma, that was bad. We don't talk about that though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you, have you good seen live action? I watched one episode. I'm out. Yeah, I, I just watched a bunch of clips on Twitter, and uh, so bad. oh my god, okay, it's he, horrible. Here's the question: Do you think they made that show as yes. a rage bait show? Yes. Oh, hundred sure. percent. Like they, they could have made a good show. They didn't want to. It's HBO. They can make a fucking good show if they want to make it. They're, they're like, if you want a TV series done the best, HBO have like the dudes. I don't know who they have on speed dial, but they just don't miss. Everything HBO, if you look at some of the best TV shows in history, yeah. half of them are HBO. I feel mm. I feel like just because they must have some kind of like, they have must have some kind of like big vetting process about what shows Yeah, I think, I think they also have like a roster of like just really great writers, directors, everything. Like yeah. they, they just, they've been doing it so long and I think they just, they're just great. I don't know, I again, I just shouldn't be speculating, but I mean, the HBO has been around for a very long time mm. and they've, yeah. they clearly have, you know, some of the most impactful shows on like pop culture they've had. Um, so- Velma is not going to be one yeah. of those. That's, it's had an impact. <laughs> it's had, it, it has had an impact. No, Cause I've, I've you know, like always Game felt- Game of Thrones, right? Like yeah. uh, House of Dragon. Um, what else is HBO? Band of Brothers is HBO. Mm. Yeah, cause um, I've always felt like they've had a very, their, their approach to TV shows has always been very cultivated. You know, it's, it's something that's, they don't approve every show on like like Netflix, for example, yeah, true, but true. every show that they do approve is always of like the highest quality. Yeah. I kind of feel similar to like going to like the manga world, like Shonen Jump. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what the Shonen Jump secret source is, <laughs> you know, but somehow every generation they are able to make the biggest and most impactful anime shows manga I mean, I, I mean, of they, their generation. I mean, the, you know, yeah. I'm sure with uh, talented authors, but I'm also, I, I, you know, there's probably the dudes who are curating Shonen and Jump. Are yeah. probably, you know, if I'm a new uh, manga co or anything, right? And you've got these dudes who've been working at 40 years who can give you any insight and yeah. can steer you in the right direction. Like mm. that's, that's probably, Worth a lot. I too. mean, they yeah, say I, it's harder to get a serialization on Shonen Jump than it is to be accepted into Tokyo University. I believe is, it, <laughs> which is like insane. If you if you ask a Japanese person that, right? Like, it's literally one in a million. Like, yeah. I can't imagine the amount of like, you know, mediocre to shit manga that they have to sift through to be like, yeah, all right, uh, we don't know how to tell you this, but. Uh, Go home. You know? Yeah, because it's it, it's like way easier to fall off than to keep putting out fucking bangers all the True. time. Right? That's why Oda yeah. the goat. <laughs> That's why he's the goat. <laughs> like I, I remember when uh, Naruto and Bleach ended, there was this like huge fucking hole, and everyone's like, "Oh, the big three died." Mm. Is anime is shonen going to be as popular as it can be? And for like for like a few like for like a good like three, four years, nothing came to like take their spot. And mm. I remember thinking, oh, maybe, maybe this is time for like 
other types of shows. Cause mm. that's when Attack on Titan and One Punch Man got really popular. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, maybe maybe Shonen Jump is slowly like falling off. Who knows? Maybe they can't make something as impactful as Naruto and Bleach. Mm. And then turns out I they just needed like a fucking buffer mm-hmm. uh, because then My Hero Academia came out, Demon Slayer, Chainsaw Man, Jujutsu Kaisen, Spy Family. Fuck it, it's just like now they've gone from like the big three to like the big seven or eight or some <laughs> shit like that. They've got like, a strong roster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything's good. They do. Yeah. I'm like, what is the secret? Tell, tell me the secret. Heroin, God. heroin, black tar heroin. <laughs> black tar heroin. <laughs> God, please bring it to the fucking isekai genre. Yeah. We fucking need that shit. Although man. there is still that like, you know, very real scare that I think all like Shonen fans are wondering, especially with Shonen Jump of like, all right, you know, a lot of these like, Good shows that you you mentioned, right? Like the you know they're carrying, but everyone knows that behind the scenes, One Piece is still carrying Shonen Jump pretty fucking hard. Like <laughs> Oda's shoulders must be cracked because of just how much he's carrying Shonen Jump right now. So everyone, I think, in the back of their minds is like, all right, what's gonna happen when One <laughs> <What's> Piece ends? <laughs> like, what's gonna happen to Shonen Jump when One Piece ends? I was like, no, we don't need to worry about that. We don't need to worry. Yeah. So they're just like, I bet like Shu Asia just like begging Oda <laughs> yeah. to be like, please don't stop. I beg <laughs> of you. They'll, they'll, they'll make Luffy the emperor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm scared because I don't think One Piece is going to die. I think <laughs> it's going to be a Boruto kind of situation. Oh, Probably. I, I mean, are we gonna know? get a two yeah. piece? Yeah, because you've started reading One Piece, you're not like completely up to date, but you can already tell that the world of One Piece is so fucking vast that I already know they're gonna try to, they're, they're gonna try to- Spin-offs. Not like, I, I wouldn't say milk it, but it has potential for so many interesting stories within the world. It's like mm. a ton of prequels already from what yeah. I've seen that I'd be like, I'd like to know what happened before. I mean, yeah, they're already yeah. doing that. Like they released like a, a an Ace story prequel um, in the manga and that's like popped off recently as yeah. well. So it's like, yeah, they're already doing it. But like yeah. the moment One Piece actually ends, they're like, all right, we're gonna list out all these characters that didn't get enough backstory. <laughs> just make individual manga and anime about Oda it. Oda seems like the kind of dude who's not gonna stop writing manga until he physically cannot. Like, and yeah, I, yeah. you see like, you're seeing One Piece, you're like, this dude's not gonna stop. No. Like, this <laughs> is not the type of dude who says, I think I'm done. Like, yeah. he, he is the type of dude who will be like, I'm just gonna not stop doing this until I physically am unable to. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah. 100%. I just I just hope, okay, here's, here's my hope. Cause I know- Or he discovers like, a what type of porn he likes or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Or he discovers Idol Master or some yeah, shit. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, you know, there's the two, there's, the, there's a couple of ways you can have downfall. In yeah. yeah. Oh, no, let me introduce you to the world of Genshin Impact. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> Could you imagine it's like, uh, this week uh, One Piece is on hiatus because Oda discovered Genshin yeah. Impact. <laughs> oh my no, God. because like what, the one thing I wish for when One Piece ends is that they give us some time, a few years to mourn because I feel like, do you, do you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Because like, you know, when, when something- not clarity, right? When something ends, sometimes you just need a little time to just let that ending sink in and just know, okay, yeah. that that's it. Uh, because I felt like with Naruto, I remember reading that last chapter and I was just like, fuck man, a part of my childhood has died. Um, and then Naruto, the last movie got announced like immediately afterwards. <laughs> I was like, fuck, Jesus Christ, man, come on. Give me some time here, man. Come on, I'm just. It's, like, just, it's like it's like a family member dying, and then your yeah. mom being like, "Here's your brand new cousin." It's like, <laughs> it's like, come on, man. I just attended your funeral, man. Come it's on, like, chill. I'm mourning you right now. Come on, <laughs> daddy, chill, please. Come on. Oh my god. Like, like, I, I, like, I, I, I know that not they're I'm not sure. gonna let One Piece die straight away, but I hope at least they'll let the legacy sink in for a little bit before they start fucking milking the shit out yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, um, hope so. That's 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 my hope at least. Pray. Uh, yeah, who knows? Mm. But hey, look at all these patrons though. Are you excited or sad or mourning the potential loss of One Piece soon? Let us know down below. <laughs> yes, and by every, soon, I mean, here. And by soon, I mean the next 10 years. Relative soon. It's a yeah, relative soon. Relative soon. Yes. But uh, hey, if you'd like to support the show, then go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash trash taste. Also follow us on Twitter, send us your memes on the subreddit. And if you hate our face, listen to us on Spotify. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll end it at that. Yeah. yeah. See you Thanks guys so next watching. week. Bye. Bye.